Tommy West said at the beginning of the season, we're going to have a balanced offense. Then came losses to Florida State, Georgia Tech, and Virginia, and they decided to rethink things in the off week, and they went back to the ground attack against Maryland, and they've got a good one in Raymond Priest. Well, they certainly do, and they go back to what they do best, and that's run the football. And here's a guy that's one of the best in the country. He's rushing for 102 yards a game. He leads the ACC, and what a football player. He can make his own crease and spot in that defense. Tommy West's problem as far as the schedule is concerned. He's got four wins, but only three against one A opponent, so he needs to find three wins in the next three games, or next four games, to really improve things as you look at the schedule here. Well, this is the big one right here. If he's so fortunate to get by this one, he'll have Duke and Death Valley, and that's a good one. Then he can win one out of the last two. He'll be in good shape. Of course, he's got to beat this one today against Wake Forest. If you're a coach, what do you tell Coach Tommy West to concentrate on as a key? Well, the key always with Clemson. If they can win the turn over battle and they can run the football when they do that Clemson normally wins and of course Wake Forest developing that offensive balance well there's no doubt about it what they did last week against Duke were able to run the football took the pressure off the passing game that way Kuklik doesn't have to do it all well Wake Forest will turn it over 25 turnovers to 12 of their opponents they must hang on to the football this afternoon Mike Hogwood joins us next with Wake Forest coach Jim Caldwell right after this Today's ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Nations Bank. By Pepsi, Generation Next. By Bell South. Bell South is proud to be the official telecommunications company of the ACC. By Exxon, the best way to get there. And by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, the vision to power your dreams. I'm Mike Hawkwood. I'll be down on the sidelines today. Right now, we're on the Wake Forest sideline. It's an emotional group over here. Head coach Jim Caldwell, are your guys ready today? What's the feeling you got in the locker room? Well, you know, we're ready to play. This is one we've been waiting for. Uh, it's a good hard practice all week long. We're ready to get after it a little bit. Anything you want to establish early in this game? Well, the big thing is that we got to make certain we stop the run and make certain that we mix it up enough on offense to keep them off balance. All right, that's a word from Jim Caldwell. You can tell these guys are ready to go here on this sideline. It's the same story over on the Clemson sideline. Tommy West says his players are taking this game absolutely seriously. They've had a great week of practice. See, Martin said it. This is the brawl for it all. Bowl hopes are on the line here. We've got the kickoff from Winston-Salem coming up next. Clemson has an overwhelming lead in this series. They've won the last three and 18 of the last 20, and Wake Forest has only won once here at Grove Stadium. Let's take a look at what we'll see. David Richardson to kick off as Clemson's won the toss, and they've deferred their option to the second half, and he'll be kicking to one of the most dangerous returners in the ACC. He's at the top of your screen. That's Miles Savage. Jamie Deese on the bottom of your screen. Savage. Broke one off for 98 yards a week ago. This time he's five yards deep and will not come out. And he'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. And that's where Wake Forest will start things off first and 10. Brian Kuklick brings him out. And Kuklick is having a tremendous season. 60% of his passes for completion. 14 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, 2,000 yards plus. Broken arm in 1995 and career high of 29 touchdown passes in a Wake Forest uniform. And the junior from Hatboro, Pennsylvania brings him out first and 10 at the 20. Wande Shaw and Herman Lewis gets the snap on the first play from scrimmage and Lewis gets up over the 20 but very little more. Anthony Simmons on the tackle after the game of one. Let's have a look at that Wake Forest offense. Herman Lewis, 160 yards against Duke a week ago. Wande Shaw, great blocking back. Great receivers to Beattie Davis and Desmond Clark. Top, time, top 10 all time. And Joe Zelenka at tight end. Chris Gaskell, an outstanding senior at center. Jeff Lowe, a man to watch at left tackle. And Taurus Clark playing his final game at Grove Stadium this afternoon. Second down and nine, the handoff goes to Morgan Kane. He'll alternate with Herman Lewis and runs into the heart of the Clemson line. 
led there by Lorenzo Bromel and Raymond White. Let's look at it this way. Adrian Dingle, the defensive end, three sacks against Maryland a week ago with Clanton, Bromel, and Raymond White. We'll also see Jolly in there as well. One of the best linebackers in the country is Anthony Simmons. He'll pair with Mon Wilson and Raheem Abdullah. And Antoine Edwards moves out to cornerback from his strong safety spot in the secondary and area of concern for Clemson. Third and nine now, and Kuklik in the shotgun formation. Back to throw. The pass is incomplete. Lost on the sidelines right in front of head coach Jim Caldwell. Pass was intended for Desmond Clark and a successful defensive series for the Clemson Tigers. Well, there's no doubt about it. Let's take a good look at it here. Desmond Clark comes off. The ball is put right where you want it to his outside, but Desmond just was not able to hold on to it. That was an excellent pass by Brian Kuklin. Trip Moore back to punt. He's a junior out of Columbia, South Carolina. Tony Horn, the setback for the Clemson Tigers on our first kicking down of the ball game. some time gets it out of there horn will get away from this one and it takes a wake forest bounce and it'll be down at the 32 yard line it's a 47 yard kick and that's where the clemson tigers will take over and here comes neilon green neilon is up and he's down when he's up he's very very good you see him there at 1388 yards completing Almost 60% of his passes. He's thrown nine interceptions, seven interceptions rather. He struggled last week against Maryland, but Raymond Priester carried the mail last week. But Neilon Green is a very dangerous quarterback and holds a ton of records at Clemson. First and 10, working from his own 32. The play fake to Priester, the pass to the tight end, Lamont Hall, but D'Angelo Solomon makes sure the play doesn't progress any further than the 36-yard line. Let's look at the offensive starters. Raymond Priester, the leading all-time rusher in Clemson history, and that's a pretty good history because this is a run-oriented school. Terry Witherspoon, Wofford, Tony Horn, one of the best receivers in the ACC. Glenn Roundtree and Jim Bundren are the anchors to an outstanding Tiger offensive line. Second down and five. Actually, second and six from the 36 as they try to reset the play clock here and we'll be back and underway. But Clemson comes out and throws the ball right on first and ten. Yes, it is. Neilon Green checking off the line of scrimmage. The handoff goes to Priester. Priester follows a block, still on his feet. Brought down by D'Angelo Solomon, but he's got a first down at the 45-yard line. Let's take a look at it. That's what you call second effort running, uh, Steve. Watch the effort of Raymond Priester right here. He pushes his block out of the way. Good effort. Keeps those legs moving and gets extra yardage to give him the first down. Running out of the eye. Now they'll stack it up there again with Witherspoon as the fullback. There's Raymond Priester and what he's done thus far this season. Two, a thousand yards in each of the last two. And a handoff to Priester again, looking for something to open up, and nothing does. Wake Forest shuts it down, and right at the point of attack is Fred Robbins, a sophomore from Pensacola, Florida. Let's take a look at those Wake Forest Demon Deacon lineups here on defense. And you'll see Fatsinger, Robbins, Kelvin Shackelford, and Kelvin Jones up front. The linebackers are Zadell, Kelvin Moses, and Dustin Lyman. D'Angelo Solomon, DeLon Parrish on one side of the backfield, Jeffrey Myers, and Damian Daniel on the other. Second down and 10 out of the shotgun, Neilon Green. Green, nothing develops, has to go out of the pocket. Jones chasing him, and now makes some yardage. Up to the 45-yard line of Wake Forest. DeLon Parrish chased him out of bounds, but that's where Neilon Green is so dangerous. Well, that's exactly right. This is what he's able to do when he gets pressure, and he can't find an open receiver. He's looking, looking, and he pulls that ball down. He's quick. He's got good feet. Puts a good move on there, faking the pass. It goes out of bounds about the 44-yard line and gets a needed yardage for the first down. It's going to be close enough for the measurement, but now they'll move the chains to the 45-yard line. 
Here's the rushing numbers for Neilon Green. 2.4, and that takes into consideration all of the loss yardage for sacks. That's not bad for a quarterback. That's for a running right. back, you'd say, well, gee, why isn't he up around four? But <laughs> he has to accept all his sack yardage. First and ten. Hand off to the fullback. Witherspoon, and Witherspoon charges ahead. He's close to another first down. Brought down by Calvin Moses, but Witherspoon, the sophomore from Monroe, North Carolina, finds it going good for about 10 yards. Well, let's take a look at it. Good blocking by the right guard, round three. Excellent block. And Witherspoon just breaks the tackle and goes and gets an 11-yard gain. Oh, it's about a nine-and-a-half-yard gain. Looked like Dustin Lyman got fake looking at Priester, and then Witherspoon walked right by him. Here comes Witherspoon again, and Witherspoon straight ahead for the first down. I think it's important that Witherspoon get the call here, Bill, because you look at Clemson. They're an eye tailback team, which calls for a classic fullback, but Witherspoon's not a classic fullback. Well, they're king on the tailback and able to give the ball to the fullback that pops it open but the success of uh, Wake Forest's defense has been those big people inside Robbins and Jordan of course Jordan's not playing today but Shackleford for this and the linebackers have been a real key for the Wake defense six play of the drive and it is first and ten at the 33 of Wake play fake for Elon Green over the middle it is complete and brought down by Brian Wofford Ryan Wofford with a reception, good enough for another first down. He's down near the 15-yard line, make it the 13, a 25-yard gain for Clemson. Well, let's take a look at it, but watch Wofford. When he catches this ball, he's going to really take a whack, and he holds on right there. Boom! He holds on to that football and gets some extra yardage. It's yep. going right across the middle, and there's Myers. Myers, number 38, coming in and making the hit. In four down territory at the 13. The pitch to Priester. Priester on his way, fights off a tackler and surges to the five-yard line. Dustin Lyman put a shoulder to him, but not before Priester had nine yards. Well, that's what makes Raymond Priester an outstanding back. He always fights for that extra yardage. He's a second effort runner. Let's watch him right here. There's a tackle on him. He keeps fighting, keeps fighting, keeps those feet moving, and gets about two extra yards because of his second effort. Second down and two. Give him eight on the play. Ball resting at the five-yard line. They need just inside the four to the three to get a first. Green barking the signals. It's Witherspoon again. And Witherspoon gets the first down all the way to the two. But already, Bill, in seven plays, they feature the fullback three times. Well, I think that's a good call by the Clemson offensive staff. Steve Innsmanger is the offensive coordinator. Again, they're keying on Priester, and they're handing that ball up front to uh, Terry Witherspoon. Nine plays. They've used three and a half minutes. They started at their own 32. They are first and goal at the Wake Forest two-yard line. Here's Priester, and he looks like he's close enough, but no, he's going to be just shy. Well, now they say touchdown. <laughs> touchdown, Clemson. Well, it, it appeared from up here that he was in, but they just wanted to make sure that he was. That's an old Clemson football drive right there. Take the ball right down the field, running it. Let's take a good look at it again. Good lead blocking there, and we see Priester go up over the pal, and he's got the ball over the plane, which is a touchdown. So Clemson strikes first, and David Richardson is in to kick the extra point. It's up, and it is no good. So foul that away for later as Richardson is wide to the left side, and that's his second miss for point after touchdown this season. But Clemson's on the board as they lead Wake Forest 6-0 in Winston-Salem. Clemson on Raymond Priester's touchdown from two yards out makes it 6-0. To the touchdown by Priester capped a 10-play drive. That traveled some 68 yards, started at the 32-yard line of Clemson and took them three minutes and 52 seconds to execute for Priester on the season. It was his sixth rushing touchdown. 
No third downs in the drive, importantly enough. There were some key carries by the fullback Witherspoon, a 25-yard pass completion inside the 30 to Brian Wofford. And in fact, there were two pass plays on that first drive, the first play of the drive to Lamont Hall, and then, of course, the 25-yarder to Wofford. Well, a big play may be the extra point uh, in the ball game. You know, you that's a very important. When you score a touchdown, that should be automatic, and you should get that extra point. There's the reception by Savage, and he's on his way. Sees a hole up the middle and almost shakes free from a tackle made by Rudy Curry. Gets Wake into good field position at the 37-yard line. Let's go to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Jim Caldwell just emphasized to his offense, in particular quarterback Brian Kuklick, they've got to get some kind of a drive here. They can't go three and out again and let Clemson get the entire momentum of this football game. They've got to get some of that momentum back, and they're going to try to do it right here. Be interesting to see how they do that, Mike, because Wake Forest does not want to get locked into just throwing the ball up and down the field. They want to get something out of their ground game. And Herman Lewis is charged with trying out on first down, and he runs into a very stout Wake Forest Clemson defense that is led in there by Daryl Crutchfield. Well, Wake Forest is in the eye formation, and watch the speed of the Clemson defense as number 42, Mound Wilson, comes over along with number 30, Crutchfield, to make the stop. Excellent quickness on part of the Clemson defense. Second down and 12 coming up now for Wake Forest. And again, trying to run straight ahead. And it is going to be Chris McCoy, redshirt freshman from here in Winston-Salem, runs up the middle, gets a little running room. Wake Forest trying to stay away from the pass as a necessary tool. They want to keep it as a surprise in their offense. And Jim Caldwell says, let's establish the run, see what we can get there. We know Brian Kukla can get it done. But now they're looking at third and 10, and he has to get it done. Well, that's a big third down play here. They've got to convert on this one to keep those chains moving. Jamie Deese in the slot. The throw goes to Kane on the screen. It's a patented Wake Forest play that is there just about every time. And Kane breaks it out to the 49-yard line, a gain of 12 on the play on the key third down conversion. Well, that's the Wake Forest offense. They can explode on you. Watch Kuklik just toss the ball right out to Kane. Kane's got excellent speed. He just outruns him and gets the needed yardage for the first down. Desmond Clark is split wide to the top side. Two wide outs to the wide side of the field, Jamie Deese and Tavidi Davis. Big receivers are Brian Cook. Look, is back to throw in first and 10 and finds Clark complete in Clemson territory at the 43-yard line where Michael Allen drives him out. Well, the Wake Forest coaches talked about they were not going to hold the ball a long time. They were going to try to short, throw the short game. Let's take a look at it here. Cook goes back, a three-step drop, and throws a quick five-yard out to Desmond Clark. Very effective. Clark split again to the short side. Tabidi Davis to the wide side. They've got an H back as the tight end. This is setting up a double tight end set, and the handoff goes to Keto Gary. And Gary, who scored his first touchdown a week ago against Duke, finds the ground a little rougher this time out. 4-3 speed, but it's going to be third down and three. Well, they have an excellent, strong defensive front, Clemson does. And this is going to be a real key. Who is going to win the battle up front? Whether it's going to be Clemson's defensive line or Wake Forest's offensive line, and vice versa when they change the ball. DeMont, gonna... DeMont McKenzie is in at the nose guard now for Terry Jolly. And here's Kuklik out of the shotgun. His pass against the Blitz is complete at the 32-yard line of Jamie Deese. And it's going to be an 11-yard gain to turn third down into first. DeMarco Fox is in on the stop. It's a second third down conversion. Wake is hit. Well, let's watch Kuklik. He's got pressure on him. They come with a Blitz. He's going to take a hit, but he's able to get that ball off to Jamie Deese. He's got quick release. That's one thing about Kuklik. That was Abdullah coming right here, number 53. And oh, does he hit Brian Kuklik. First and 10 from the 32 of Clemson. 
Wake Forest with the football and here comes Herman Lewis and he trips but it's because of the penetration of Tony Planton and Lorenzo Bromel. They are getting underneath the Wake Forest offensive line, Bill, and it's uh, going to be a problem that the Deacons are going to have to put up with all afternoon. Well, he's exactly right, but the thing is that Wake Forest is trying to establish a run to make them honest, keep them honest, have a balance in their offense, and, uh, you know, it's going to be tough running against that big Clemson defensive line. Second and 11, ball at the 33. Kuklik back to throw, Planton rushing him, gets it off in time to Desmond Clark. And Clark is marked to forward progress at the 25-yard line. They'll mark it a gain of eight. He'll still be three yards shy of the first down. Well, Kuklik may be one of the best performing quarterbacks right now in the ACC. Watch him. Plant his feet, get rid of that football. And, of course, with the receiving core that he has, number 83, Desmond Clark, is just outstanding. Allen, Michael Allen, number 10, comes up and makes the stop. A big, another big third down play in this draft. Specialty of Wake Forest, 41% is nothing to sneeze at. They're two for three this afternoon. And they're looking at third and three, trailing by six, six nothing. Kuklik to throw, flag on the play, Deese complete for the first down. Kuklik Looks like they got a free play that time because of the offsides against It'll be an offsides against Clemson. I think he jumped a little too quick, was in the neutral zone. Let's see what the official says. Offside on the defense. Penalties declined. First down. Move the change because Deese has moved the ball to the down inside the 20-yard line, and he'll have it at the 18 on a gain of seven. Let's take a look. There's the Clemson man jumping, and then rolling to your left, Cooklick finds Jamie Deese, number 21, and again, he puts the ball right on the money outside where it can't be broken up. Excellent throw by Brian Cooklick. Deese and Clark are split wide to B.D. Davis to the short side of the field. Cooklick checking off out of the shotgun on first and 10. Has some time over the middle. Oh. Pass deflected by Simmons. Anthony Simmons, the junior linebacker out of Spartanburg, South pass Carolina, knocked down the pass Jamie intended Deese. for Jamie Deese. Well, Simmons is a guy that's Second everywhere. You look up, if they're running the ball, he's there. If they're throwing the ball, he's there. He's an outstanding football player. He's up for the Butkus Award, you know, as the outstanding linebacker in the country. He made All-American as a freshman. We're in the 11th play now. They've had it for nearly four minutes. Starting from their own 35-yard line. Here is Kuklik back to throw. He has a man complete. That's Desmond Clark inside the five. What a tough catch by Clark. And Michael Allen is there to make the tackle. Well, believe me, Steve, that, you know, Clark made an outstanding reception, but watch, watch Brian Kuklik where he puts this ball right inside. The defensive back has no chance at all of breaking it up. Let's take a look at it. You see Allen, number 10, on the outside. He's hit five of his last six passes. It's first and goal from the three. Here's the pitch to Kane, trying to turn the corner. There's nothing there, and a big hit laid on him. Simmons and Mon Wilson were there to stop it, and they had help from Carswell. Mon Wilson, the fifth-year senior out of Tupelo, Mississippi, instrumental on the stop. Reggie Herring called him in our conference call the other day. Blue collar. It's a blue collar defense. Watch the pursuit of the Clemson defense. There's number 41. There's Mon Wilson. Both linebackers right there, and then you see all the white shirts around that football. Second down and goal. Wake Forest trying to match Clemson on the board. Here's the delay cut back to Kane, and nothing doing again. Simmons cuts him down, but the initial hit was made by Adrian Dingle at the line of scrimmage. He slowed him up, and everybody else caught up. But I want you to look who's around that football every time. Simmons, number 41, and Wilson, number 42. Adrian Dingle, as you've mentioned, got in and penetrated and made the ball carrier flatten it out. But good pursuit again by the Clemson defense. 410 left to go in this first quarter. Third and goal. Ball at the five. Wake trailing 6-0. Kuklik in the shotgun. Looking for Tabidi Davis in the end zone. Got him! Touchdown, Wake Forest! Touchdown, Steve, this was a concern 
of Wake Forest because the receivers are both six foot three. They can get over the heads of the cornerbacks of Clemson's defenders. And there goes to Beanie Davis, just reached up over the head of number 10 and caught the football for a touchdown. The 30th career touchdown pass for Brian Kuklick. The third in as many weeks for Tabidi Davis, who had two against Duke. Let's take a look at it. Here it is. And there's, well, the defensive back, Allen, number 10, didn't turn around, but Tabidi Davis just reached up over his head and caught the ball. Verdict for the kick, and Wake Forest steps out in front. They convert after their touchdown as the Demon Deacons on Tabidi Davis's five yard touchdown reception from Brian Kuklick. Take the lead, 7-6. to six. We'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. Wake Forest moves out in front, 7-6 on the pass from Kuklik to Tavidi Davis with 3.55 left to go in the first quarter. Stay tuned for the Nation's Bank Salute to Excellence question. You can log on to www.acc.com for a chance to win a trip to the ACC Champions Bowl game. Serious discussion going on on the Wake Forest sideline. Possible injury to Brian Kuklik. With the story, here's Mike Hogwood. Well, Brian Kuklik has just left the trainers. Uh, he is not feeling well at all. He's trying to walk off. He got hit on the knee. They don't know what it is right now, but Ben Sankey is warming up just in case. This is not what Wake Forest wanted to see. But I can tell you one thing. There's not a tougher player in this league than Brian Kuklik. And if he can walk, he's going to be back out there next series. But he's in pain right now. Seven of eight on the drive. Seven of nine for the day there's Ben Sankey getting the arm loose in case Kuklik can't answer and of course Wake Forest hopes it's a short time before they have to make a decision on a quarterback that would mean their defense would have held Clemson here well that'll be a real blow to the Wake Forest uh, offense here it comes the reception comes back to Antoine Edwards Edwards straight ahead up over the 25 to the 27 yard line and bringing him down is number 41, Matt Petz. All right, Nations Bank, a corporate partner of the ACC, presents this excellence, or salute to excellence question. Who's the only ACC team to beat Florida State since the Seminoles joined the league? If you know the answer, log on to the internet address on the screen with the correct answer before the fourth quarter begins, and you'll be entered to win two tickets to the ACC Champions Bowl game. Stay tuned. We'll have that answer for you before the end of the game, even though... A million of you already have it. First and 10 at the 27, actually 28-yard line. Elon Green under center with Witherspoon and Priester back. Here's Priester. And Priester up over the 35-yard line. Mark him down at the 36. Gain of close to eight. Well, that's good, tough running. Wake Forest is trying to give a lot of different looks up front because they know they're facing the biggest line in Clemson history. There's good movement there. Watch Witherspoon, number 26, come in and make an excellent block on Dustin Lyman. Good block. And Priester makes seven on the play, second down and three. There's Priester again. They don't hesitate to work. Raymond Priester at all. The Allendale, South Carolina senior is tackled by Kelvin Moses. He's going to be very close to the first down. Well, Moses, uh, the weak side linebacker, has uh, just made, played outstanding. As I mentioned, the key to Wake Forest's defense has been Lyman, Zadell, and Moses, the three linebackers. They make most of the stops. Zadell with 54, Moses with 69. And now we've got a timeout on the field. Steve, the Wake Forest coaches talked about they were going to get the front of Wake Forest to move around because they did not want to be stationary and let the big offensive line of Clemson come off on it. So they're trying to give them different looks. Uh, Wake Forest called for a measurement, and that means that Clemson gets first down. So instead of being their first third down of the day, they're going to first down off the game by Raymond Priester. And coming up next week, you'll see one of two games here on the station you're watching right now. Some of you will watch Maryland take on NC State, and then there are others who will follow us to Clemson, where the Duke Blue Devils will play these same Clemson Tigers. That's where Bill and I will be next week, Death Valley. First and 10 for Clemson now, working out of their own 38-yard line. The play fake. 
The pass complete to the tight end, Lamont Hall. Hall into Wake Forest territory and brought down at the 40-yard line. It's a 22-yard gain on the play, and for Hall, that's his second reception of the day. He had five on the season coming in. Well, it was good misdirection. Watch Nalon Green fake to Priesta, then come out on a bootleg style play and foul Lamont Hall. You know, the coaches are really high on Lamont Hall, also as a blocker and a pass receiver. He went three years and caught seven passes. They're, they've started to introduce the tight end into their offense this year. The pitch goes to Priester with a good play fake by Nelon Green, but DeLon Parrish and D'Angelo Solomon had nothing on it on the end, and they stopped it after a yard game. Well, that secondary really closed on that option play. Fake to Weatherspoon, pitches out to Priester. Let's take a look at it. Here's the fake on the option, pitching out, and there's number five right there. Oh, and then you see number three come up, D'Angelo Solomon, a senior who's been starting and has played a lot of football for Wake Forest. A lot of veteran talent back there. Jim Caldwell is red-shirted wisely. Three wide outs and second and nine now for Clemson. Trailing in the ballgame, 7-6. Green facing pressure, gets rid of it to Priester. And Priester is short of the first down, knocked out in front of the Wake bench at the 34-yard line. Robert Fatzinger, the senior out of Northampton, Pennsylvania on the play for Raymond Priester. Awake brought a lot of pressure off the corner. Let's take a look at it. There he is right there. Here's Fred Robbins, a big uh, tackle inside, putting the pressure on Nelon Green. You know, Priester is a versatile football player. Not only is he an outstanding runner, but he's an excellent pass receiver. Caught 11 balls this season and an average of seven a clip. Third and four for Clemson, trailing 7-6. Out of the shotgun, Nelon Green. Here comes the blitz. Here comes the toss into Wofford. He can't hang on. Pass is incomplete as Wofford never had control. And now brings up fourth down and a decision for Tommy West. Let's take a look. This is what they call a slip screen where the inside people go out and block and they bring the outside receiver up underneath. It's an old screen play where you block out in front of it, and he just wasn't able to, to hold on to the football play. I know Brian Warford would like to take that one back. Kevin Laird to hold for David Richardson as they line up for the field goal. If they kick it, it'll be a 52-yarder. Don't be surprised if Clemson tries to buy some field position here. Well, there's the snap, there's the kick. It's long enough, and it is oh. good. A 52-yarder <laughs> from David Richardson. What a kick. Longest previous one was 42 yards, and Clemson retakes the lead on Richardson's long kick from 52 out, 9-7. The Clemson Tigers on David Richardson's 52-yard field goal, a career long by 10 extra yards, lifts Clemson to a 9-7 lead. How important is this game? We'll look at the standings and you'll see. Wake Forest in their final home game this afternoon. They stand at 4-4, four and 3-3 four, three and three in conference play. Their next two beyond this on the road. Clemson, 4-3, and 2-3 and three in the ACC, and three of those wins against one A teams, the other against Appalachian. So they have four games remaining. A win today, quite pivotal because they've got games with Duke, North Carolina, and then South Carolina remaining. Richardson has lifted the Tigers' spirits with that long field goal and lifted Clemson into the lead in an exciting first quarter. And here's his kick. Savage backpedaling, and this one will go out of the end zone. And Wake Forest will take over at the 20-yard line. And let's see who comes out at quarterback now for the Demon Deacons. And it's going to be Kuklik. He doesn't look, uh, it doesn't appear that he's affected by that uh, hit on the knee. Just limping slightly, but uh, other than that, he looks fine. First and 10 for Wake Forest at their own 20-yard line. Here's what Brian Kuklik has done today. His touchdown strike to DeBede Davis. Lone setback is Keto Gary, and the long play fake is incomplete, intended for Zelenka at tight end. Carswell covering on the play. No flags down, and it'll be second down. Well, that was excellent coverage by Robert Carswell, the freshman, 
who's uh, filling in at strong safety for Antoine Edwards, switched over to a uh, cornerback. Number nine, Robert Carswell did a good job coverage on that play. You know, we're talking to Clemson coaches this week. They're very concerned about that secondary. Carswell, though, came on very big with 11 tackles against Maryland. Won the job. Antoine Edwards moves off to the cornerback spot. Here's Kuklick to throw. Grab as he let it go, and it is complete to Desmond Clark, who battles his way close to the first down. Clark already having a big day. 28-yard line, 9-yard gain on the pass play. It's going to be short of the first down, but it puts Wake in a much better position. Well, that's that little three-step drop by Brian Kuklick. One, two, three, and he throws it out to Desmond Clark. What a receiver he is. Good job of running the ball. Of course, when you're six foot three, 230-something pounds, he just runs over number one, Antoine Edwards, for extra yardage. Third down and two. There's the third down conversion chart for Wake, and now... We've got a penalty flag and a smart decision by Brian Kuklick. Wait was, or rather Clemson was in the neutral zone and Kuklick wisely got a snap. Well, Chris Gaskell, the center, put that ball up to Brian Kuklick when he saw Clemson in the neutral zone. And of course, it's no play, but it's definitely going to be against uh, Clemson University, a five yard penalty. And that'll give Wake Forest a first down. Here's Terry McCall. Right of the snap. Offside on the defense. Five yards. Those are two veterans working together. Watch Chris Gaskell, number. There he is right there. He sees, number 65, sees the Clemson defense in the neutral zone and wisely snaps that ball up to Kuklick. And that was Terry Jolly, the nose guard, number 92, that jumped. He's a true freshman, starting at the nose today, alternating with DeMont McKenzie. First and 10 now for Wake Forest as they move it out to the 34. Kuklick. The throw intended for Clark, and he makes sure it's uncatchable. That's Covering on the play, Michael the Allen, a junior out of Conway, Michael South Allen. Carolina. Second. Well, that was a good, uh, good play by the Wake Forest coaching staff. They were going to fake the run because they had been running on first down and then pull it out and throw it. Morgan Keene returns to the Wake Forest backfield. If you look down the Wake Forest sideline, Clemson leading 9-7. We're in the closing moments here of the first quarter. We've had four possessions and three scores. Kuklick to throw just as the blitz gets to him. Wow, Bartley, Howard Bartley, the junior from Decatur, Georgia, unloaded on Brian Kuklick. Well, he takes a beating. He really does. And uh, he stands in there. Let's take a look at it. There's Kuklick looking for a receiver. And coming off his backside, oh, does he get hit. That's Howard Bartley, a junior, 6'2", 194 pounds. Hit him on the blind side, and of course, Brian Kuklick bounces right up. He's got to be the toughest quarterback in the ACC. But he's looking at a tough third down conversion, trailing by two, 9-7 in his own territory at the 34. Rushes on again. The screen is complete to McCoy. It's going to be shy of the first down, out to the 40-yard line. It'll be a gain of six, but... Wake Forest forced to punt for the second time this afternoon. Well, that's one thing that Wake Forest does very effectively is uh, they throw those little screen passes. That's the end of the first quarter of play. David Richardson's 52-yard field goal, the feature in a Clemson 9-7 lead. Welcome back to Grove Stadium in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Steve Martin with Bill Dooley and Mike Hogwood as Clemson, after an exciting first quarter, leads at 9-7. But this is what Brian Kuklick looked like after the last play. Well, you can see him limping a little bit there, Steve. That, uh, I believe that knee has bothered him a little bit. There's no doubt about it. And probably when he cools down a little more, it's going to slow him up even further. The second time today, Tripp Moore is getting ready to punt as Kuklick has his right knee looked over. The Wake Forest sideline, Tony Horn is back to receive the punt. First time around, Tripp hit a 47-yarder that was a lot of roll, not much in the air. Clemson up 9-7 on a David Richardson 52-yard field goal. Raymond Priester's run one in for a score. Wake counter with a Tabidi Davis five-yard pass from Brian Cooper. Horn gets away from this one. It goes inside the 20. Good job once again by Trent Moore, but we have a penalty flag down. Flag. 
And a Wake Forest player down as well and hurt. The player is David Moore. He's a defensive back from Smithfield, North Carolina. It's a 40 yard kick, but let's see what the penalty is going to be all about. And there's going to be a consultation. Clemson suffered a tough defensive injury that we're going to be checking up on here very shortly as Howard Bartley was injured on that last play at the end of the quarter. Bartley who figures into the rotation at defensive end. Illegal block in the back. The, fat, the block was in the front. Disregard the flag. First down. That's why they gather and talk friends. Well let's take a look at it. Oh, that was close to being a roughing the kicker, but it wasn't. He just, uh, his momentum carried him into it. Oh, let's take a look here. Now you can see the Wake Forest player right here. It, look, it appears that he hurts his knee, and uh, they're still working on him down there. He's a defensive back. David Moore. David appears to be all right. Let's take a look at our Geico first quarter stats and you see the rushing yardage that Clemson has piled up. The balance that you said coach that Wake Forest needed to achieve just isn't there even though they own time of possession. Well you're exactly right but they are attempting to run the ball trying to keep Clemson honest and I think it's opened up a little of the passing game block but wisely they are have been throwing the ball a lot on three step drops. And David Moore has helped to the sidelines as Clemson will open up now. First and 10 on their third possession of the game at their own 18 yard line after the 40 yard kick by Trip Moore. Well, I hope Moore is not hurt too. Uh, his injury is not too serious. Like he can't put any weight on it. Though. to the lone setback green with a little flare in the first pass of the day in the direction of Tony Horn and it sets him on his back without a defender in sight Tony Horn well it shows receiver. you what kind of athlete Tony Horn is watch him go up and bring that ball down there's not many people could have caught that football of course it's for a two yard loss but it shows you the athletic ability of Tony Horn uh, one of the greatest receivers in Clemson's history. First eight Clemson receiver to lead the ACC since Jerry Butler. There's Neilon Green so far in this first half. Looking at second down and he's taking his own number to the corner and is roughed up pretty good. Kelvin Moses leads the charge for Wake Forest and it'll bring up third down and 13 from the 16 yard line maybe worse. Third and 12 will be the call. There's Tony here. Horn. He's fighting. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a wrestling match going on. But Nelon Green, we saw him run the option play a second ago. That's Reggie Austin, number 12 from Wake Forest. We saw him run the option, and you can see that his toe is fully recovered from the injury he had way back in the NC State ball game. Three wide receivers now out of the shotgun for Nelon Green. On third and 12, the pass deflected. Fatsinger got a hand on it. Robert Fatsinger knocked down the little screen, and it'll bring up fourth down. Well, that was a big play, Steve, because it looked like it had a lot of grass in front of that receiver. Fatsinger just sticks his hands up, knocks the ball down. Had that have been complete, I think he would have made the needed yardage. Raymond Priester would have picked up the needed yardage for the first down. Big play by Fatsinger. First punt of the day for Kevin Laird, who averages 32-6 net, and that is worse to the ACC. He gets a lot of air under this one. Fair catch called for and taken by Reggie Austin, and that's where Wake Forest will take over first and 10 following the first Clemson punt of the day. Our score is Clemson 9, Wake Forest 7. Clemson leading Wake Forest 9-7 early in the second quarter. Big game with bowl implications for Wake Forest. The last time that the Demon Deacons played in a bowl game was back in 1992 when the Deeks faced Oregon. And the tensions were high as the Ducks and Deacons got set to square off. 
My broadcast partner, Bill Dooley, looked on, hoping his Deeks could muster a win in what would be his final game as coach at Wake Forest. Running back John Leach carried the nail, an offensive explosion that resulted in two touchdowns on the ground. The Deeks survived a late Oregon rally to win 39-35, and a big moment for the coach. Well, that was a group that just would not be denied, Steve. What, a, what an outstanding group of players for the old Deacons. And uh, they are ready to step into that situation now with Ben Sankey, a new quarterback, rolling out the sprint out pass complete to Desmond Clark. What a way to start your day. Carswell in on the tackle. They'll mark him down at the 40-yard line, and it is going to be a gain of 21 yards. Good misdirection, and then he rolls out and finds Desmond Clark. Let's take a look at it. There he fakes to Lewis, comes out. And as Desmond Clark right in his hands, you know, sometimes you're put into a role of responsibility, and I'm sure that Ben Sankey is going to accept that role and do an outstanding job here. Here's the pitch to Herman Lewis, trying to corner up, and gets up over the 40-yard line. Ben Sankey is a sophomore out of Chicago, Illinois. He is 6 for 10 on the season coming into today's game with 49 yards. There you see his report card this season. And his first pass was a 21-yard strike to Desmond Clark, who's caught five balls today for 60 yards. So Jim Caldwell hoping that Sankey can hold the fort, if not for the afternoon, until Brian Kuklick can move around on that knee. Second down and nine. Sankey, ball is batted as he was hit as he threw. And it looks like it was knocked down there by Jolly. And now, with more on Brian Kuklick's situation, let's go to Mike Hogwood. Steve, it's obvious to me Coach Dooley's seen these kind of injuries before. He said that it would start tightening up on him. And, Coach, you're exactly right. The knee has tightened up. He has very little mobility, if any, at all. He can't run out there. So they've decided to go with Sankey for the time being. Well, that's, that's a tough blow, uh, Mike, for, for Wake Forest because what an outstanding football player Brian Kuglick is. You saw the report card before and after the hit. Third down and nine for Wake, trailing 9-7. Sankey has time, has a man, Jamie Deese complete for the first down at the Clemson 25-yard line, a 14-yard pickup. Well, what a display of poise by the young quarterback, Ben Sankey. He kept waiting and waiting and waiting and then found Jamie Deese, 21. Let's take a look at it right here. Keeps his poise, keeps his poise, sets his feet, and there's Jamie Deese, number 21, coming across the field. In two pass plays, he's hit for 42 yards. That one on third changes it to first at the 25 of Clemson. And off to Herman Lewis. Has the end but couldn't get away from Michael Allen. What a play by the junior from Conway, South Carolina. He came into this game with 19 tackles and he stared Herman Lewis down at the corner. Well, that was a big play. You know, Wake Forest is still sticking with their game plan. Watch Kane. He's almost gonna break this. Herman Lewis almost breaks it. And Michael Allen, number 10, the junior cornerback, makes a big play. Second down and eight now for Wake Forest at the Clemson 23. Important drive for Ben Sankey. Play fake. Dingle in pursuit. Sankey running out of room and wisely throws it away. The pass intended in the end zone for William Merritt, but he was covered on the play, and Sankey makes a good decision not taking the sack. Well, there's no doubt about it. That was a very smart play by a young quarterback. He fakes off to Kane and comes out, gets outside of containment, does a good job, but he's about to be sacked, so he lets that ball go. Chris Jones, number 57, is right there to make the play on it. Good play by Ben Sankey. Wake Forest has been efficient, turning third to first, and Ben Sankey's looking at another long one here. Third and eight with his team trailing 9-7. Sankey fakes one way, now the other, and is complete to Desmond Clark, but it's not going to be close to the first down. It's to the 21-yard line, a gain of only two. Well, that's a play we just saw Clemson execute earlier. Uh, the little slip screen, and Desmond Clark came back under. Let's take a look at it. Fakes that way, little slip screen, and look who's making the tackle. Number 41, one of the most outstanding linebackers in this country. 
he gets around that football. A finalist for the Butkus Award. Wake Forest lining up for the field goal from Matthew Burdick. He's 12 for 17, his longest this season, 46. This will be a kick oh. of 38. It's a wobbler, but it is good. And Wake Forest steps out in front on a 38-yard field goal by Matthew Burdick, the sophomore from Winston-Salem, his 13th field goal of the season. And the Deacons are in the lead with 10.28 left to go in a seesaw first half. Matthew Burdick weighs in for the Deacons. We'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. Everybody's in rhythm here at Grove Stadium. Last home game of the season, and what a day for it. From the Arthur Murray School of Dance. Whoa. <laughs> He's got some good moves. He ought to be playing defensive back. Well, right now, it is because of the kick of Matthew Burdick that Wake Forest has stepped out in front by a score of 10 to 9, a 38-yard kick that capped 40 yards of real estate and was an important series, I thought, for Ben Sankey, who threw two big passes in that drive and developed some confidence in leadership. Well, there's no doubt about it. That'll be a big uh, uplift of his confidence. And, you know, that big missed extra point after the first goal looms big right now. And will haunt Clemson for the remainder of the afternoon. I suspect Trip Moore to kick it away. And down to get it is Tony Horn at the four. Horn surveying a hole and gets caught by David Moore, who limped off the field a moment ago. We have a flag down on the play at the 36-yard line, but David Moore had a knee problem, had to be helped from the field. That time, he caught the shirt of Tony Horn, and now he's going to be offsides. Clemson may make them kick it again. Well, that was a great recovery by number 28, Moore. I mean, he looked like he couldn't hardly walk. I was did. looking for the ambulance. <laughs> On the kicking team, five yards, re-kick. So they'll re-kick it, and David Moore's tackle will be abolished, but we know what happened. <laughs> we were there. 10-19 remaining in this first half. Tommy West now anxious to see his offense take the field after it had to punt for the first time this afternoon. A back and forth show here. Clemson took the lead on Priester's two-yard run, and Wake Forest came back on the ensuing drive and scored with Tabidi Davis pulling in a five-yard pass. Clemson returned the favor on a 52-yard field goal by David Richardson to make it 9-7 Clemson, and then Wake Forest on their fourth possession of the day after the two teams exchanged punts, came back and a 38-yard field goal from Matthew Burdick lifts the Deacons to a 10-9 lead. Five-yard penalty after the offsides. And Wake will kick again. Wofford and Horn exchange positions now. Horn was at the bottom of your screen last kick. He's now at the top. Let's see if they've confused Burdick. Wofford going back. A yard deep in the end zone. And looked for a block from Horn and got out to the 35-yard line. And that's where they'll get it, at the 25-yard line, first and 10. Let's go to the sidelines now, and Mike Hogwood for an update on a Clemson injury. Well, we talked about Howard Bartley a moment ago, and it doesn't look like he's going to be back today. He re-injured an old knee problem that he has had. And you guys talked about David Moore, how he couldn't walk at one point. What he did was he pinched a nerve in his hip. And uh, once he got the feeling back, he's absolutely fine, and he's out there on special teams. Well, good for him. I'm glad it wasn't serious. Elon Green on first and 10 at his own 25. Witherspoon, and now a new running back in at tailback. And that is going to be Sam Zanders, and Zanders carries people up over the 32-yard line. Zanders has been fighting off the injury bug of late. And there is Zanders, 210 sophomore out of Arlington, Virginia. Well, we'll take a look at the free safety, Jeffrey Myers, as he comes up and uh, makes a big tackle on Saunders, number six. Saunders uh, picked up good yardage off the right side. But Myers came in and closed on him. Suffering from a shoulder injury against Maryland was considered questionable today. I guess that answered all the questions. Second down and four. <coughs> Handoff goes to Witherspoon, and not much there. 
Well, Fred that's... Robbins, the sophomore from Pensacola, is there for the tackle. That's what's made that Wake Forest defense so tough inside. There's Robbins, 6'5", 312 pounds. And when Joyner was in there, he was over 303 pounds. So people weren't able to run in there. Again, Robbins has been an outstanding football player. And we'll take a look at it. There he is right there, big number 90. Clemson's gone to third down twice and failed. This is their third try, trailing by one. Elon Green, the handoff, and nothing there for Sanders. Robbins is there to meet him with Jeffrey Myers. What a play by big friend Robbins, number 90. They said, the Wake coaches said, people just have not been able to handle him. Let's take a look at it. There he slips right around the center, and hello, Mr. Saunders. I'm Fred Robbins. He introduced himself, and boy, what a play. Fred Robbins throws him for a two-yard loss. It's fourth and six, and Kevin Laird is back to punt now for the Tigers. Second straight series of three downs and out for Clemson. Good punt here. Austin gets it at his 24. Has some room to expand, but is brought down. Reggie Austin returns the That time by DeMarco Fox. The last field goal by Wake A 46 yard punt from Kevin Laird. And Wake Forest now will take over from their own 31 yard line. Wake Forest Courtesy of One. Two good series back to back for the Wake Forest defense as they shut Clemson down to three downs and out, and Ben Sankey returns to the huddle. Now let's go to the sidelines of Mike Hogwood. Ben Sankey's a guy who's a great athlete out of Chicago. Came to Wake to play quarterback, but actually was recruited by many Big Ten schools and Notre Dame. They wanted him as a defensive back, but he said no to them. He says, I want to play QB. And today is the payoff. Here's Herman Lewis. And Lewis on Wake Forest's most successful running play of the afternoon gets up over the 35-yard line to the 36. Robert Carswell, the true freshman from Stone Mountain, Georgia, there to stop it. Second and four. Got good line blocking off the left side. Herman Lewis just found the little soft spot, found the crease in that defense, and picked up about six or seven yards. Good blocking by, and it was Jeff Flo, number 72, that opened the hole. Junior from Charlotte. Gain of six, second and four. And off to Lewis again, same side. Almost the same result. Carswell brings him down. He's going to be close to a first as the left side's proving profitable to the Wake Forest offense. I guess that's a byproduct of having Sankey in the ball game. Let's look at it. Let's get uh, good misdirection. Watch Herman Lewis turn on the afterburners to get outside. But you can see that the offensive line did an excellent job of getting a good movement on the Clemson defensive line. A Terry, good surge. Terry McCauley confirms it. It's a first down now for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons working from their own 41-yard line. And Wake has to now think about doing things a little bit differently. Sankey's a pretty good quarterback, but he's not what Brian Kuklick is to this offense. But they've still got the running game going. Two running plays resulted in a first down, so they're mixing it up on offense. First and ten. Sankey rolls to the left, to the right. The pass complete to Tabidi Davis in Clemson territory at the 48-yard line. We have a flag, however, down at the 41-yard line. This may be headed back. Antoine Edwards with the stop. Could wipe out a gain of yeah, it's 13. A, it's a big play, and then it's going to be nullified by uh, an offensive penalty. On the offense, five yards, five yards previous spot, first down. A legal motion. That takes it from the 41 back to the 36. And Let's take a look at Tabidi Davis. Good move by Tabidi. And again, the ball is where you want it, outside where there's no chance at all of Antoine Edwards breaking that ball up. He'd have to go through the offensive receiver, and of course, that would be pass interference. So good throw by Ben Sankey. And a good reception by Tabidi Davis, who came into this game as the third all-time receiver and needed five to move up to second all-time in total receptions at Wake Forest. So Jim Caldwell not happy with that. Wanting every possible opportunity to bolster the confidence of his backup quarterback, who apparently will go for extended reps here in this one. Ben Sankey, first and 15. Sprint to the right, 
pass, almost same identical pattern. It is incomplete. Edwards covering on the play. Tabidi Davis, it was intended for. Well, there was an excellent pattern uh, by Tabidi Davis. He just dropped the ball, but the ball was put right where you wanted. You know, coming into the ball game, Clemson was really concerned about the bigness of the Wake Forest receivers. Six foot three. Watch this pass. Right, on, right where you want it. Excellent. Here's another look at it. Right outside. He just wasn't able to hold on to it, but you have to credit Edwards. He got the hand in the ball, and I think uh, knocked it just as he was getting ready to catch it. Yeah, playing today at corner, and he lines up against Davis on second and 15. Sankey across the middle, incomplete, and nearly picked off. Pass. Intended for Davis That's again, Davis. who went from the outside Darryl position Castillo. to the inside over the middle that time, and it is going to be third like down. Well, it was just a little high, but it's a little curl pattern. The outside the man the coming quarter. in, Tabidi Davis, it was high, and he wasn't able to get up, but good effort by Tabidi trying to come down with it. And there's Sankey. You look when the nerves are there, they're usually going to shoot it high, and they do. Third and seven, three and or three for seven so far in this game after hitting his first two for 42 yards. Wake Forest, five out of eight, first down. And a flag is down yep. on the play. So this would be the, the second penalty flag on this drive against the Demon Deacons, if that apparently is going to be the call. All start. Five yards, third down. Elsewhere around the country in the SEC play, Tennessee over in Knoxville leading South Carolina. Virginia, big over Maryland at College Park this afternoon. Penn State up by a touchdown. And in the Big Ten, it's Michigan leading Minnesota. And Mike Hogwood will have an update at halftime. Then Sankey returns to the huddle, his team leading 10 to 9, but he's looking at third and 20 after the. Well, I, I think we can anticipate a little screen right here. I don't think they're going to throw the ball up the field. It'll be something underneath. Morgan Kane is in there. Here's Sankey with the pass. Oh, wide open. Jamie Deese at midfield. Oh, what a third down connection to the Clemson 40-yard line. It'll be a 40-yard game. Well, what a play. Well, let's take a look at it. We can see Ben Sankey. Keeping his poise, here he is, receiving the ball out of the shotgun. He steps right up, and he throws the ball. Jamie Deese wide open. I believe there was a mix-up in the coverage. There's number, uh, number one, Antoine Edwards, who made the play. Ryan Kuklick looking on. On one hand, he's hopeful for Sankey. And on the other hand, he looks in and says, maybe I got to get well soon. Sankey goes for first down, but there's a penalty on the play. Raymond White may have stepped into the neutral zone, and this could give Wake Forest what it wanted in the first place. Well, they must be changing the snap count up a little bit to make the Clemson defense jump because that's happened before. Well, you got a quarterback who they're probably not accustomed to in only a right. second series. And he hits a key third down conversion of 40 yards. And is in operation in Clemson territory now at the 34-yard line after the penalty. Tommy West with concern. His offense isn't moving, and right now his defense has yielded a big play. First and 10, Sankey hands off to Lewis. Again, working that left side, and if he had not fallen, he would have been gone for the score. Down to the 23-yard line. It's a gain of 12. Well, it's an outstanding block by Joe Zelenka, the big tight end. But the Wake Forest line is coming off the ball. Let's take a look at it. Watch Zelenka, the tight end right there. Look at that hole. You know, Steve, I could almost run through that one, but maybe, maybe not. But uh, what a hole. What, what excellent blocking. Uh, Zelenka tied up two of them that time. It's first and ten. I'll, I think he can make it through there, Coach. Uh, the right side isn't as profitable thanks to the efforts of Lorenzo Bromel, the senior from Choppy, South Carolina. He stops Lewis for no gain at the 25-yard line. Well, that hole opened up, but he closed in a hurry. Uh, you've got to give credit to the Clemson defense because they are quick and they are big. Rommel at 255 and a senior. Second down and 10. 5-13 left in this first half. 
Wake Forest trying to tack another score onto a 10-9 lead. Sankey calls for the and quick draw play to Morgan Kane and a flag on the play, and I think they caught Clemson again. Again, in the neutral zone. And, uh, you know, they're doing something to that snap count, though, because they're making them jump. That was Bromwell. He, of course, he might have been trying to jump Offside. in there. That is the third offside penalty on Clemson this afternoon and the second on this drive. Bromwell may have been trying to get up in there and uh, get pressure on the passer and uh, just being over eager jumped in there. Second down let's, and Let's five. take a look at it. The top part of the screen is Bromwell. He jumped and of course wisely they snapped the ball and it's an offside uh, penalty against Clemson. Second and five at the 20. Morgan Kane in the backfield for Ben Sankey. Sankey out of the shotgun, looking high, and wants to Beattie Davis, but a fine play by Michael Allen, bats the ball away. Down to the sidelines, let's go to Mike Hogwood. What's happening with Clemson going off sides is that Ben Sankey has a bit of a different cadence than Brian Kuklick, his predecessor at quarterback. Kuklick is very rhythmic. And what Sankey does is he pauses a lot and hesitates. The players know this because they're used to him in practice. But it's got Clemson pretty confused on that defensive front. Third down and five. This is the ninth play coming. They've come 49 yards in their own 30-yard line. Wake Forest, six of nine on third down. Leading 10-9. Sankey to throw. And that one just caught on his hand. It is going to be incomplete. Dingle was in the territory. I'll be interested, Bill, to see this one on replay because Sankey had this one pretty much tossed. Well, he did, and it looked as, as it appeared as if Tingle was right breathing right down his face. <laughs> Here is Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator. He says that should be a fumble, and we should be going in the other direction. Let's take a look at it here. Uh, he just slipped. The ball slipped out of his hands. That's all it was. All right, here's Matthew Burdick. And this will be a kick of 37 yards right down the center of the field. Desmond Clark is holding Chris Gaskell on the placement to snap. It's up. And it is no good. Wide left. Wide left on the kick. It had the legs, but missed the upright just wide. and. Clemson is held. So the score, Wake Forest 10 and Clemson 9 with four and a half to play in the first half. We'll take this time out. Wake Forest leading Clemson 10 to 9. Four and a half minutes left to go in this first half. Steve Martin with Bill Dooley and Mike Hogwood. This is a game of inches as Matthew Burdick just found out. Inches prevented him from staking three more points to the Wake Forest lead as his field goal hit the left upright. A beautiful sun splash day here at Wake Forest. We're fortunate to have it. Rain is on the way later on today, but Neilon Green first and 10 at his own 20 yard line. After the missed field goal, back to throw. His pass incomplete, a worm burner. Stay tuned at the half for our Bell South You Called the Play feature. A look at a big call from ACC games past. Well, Green never got his feet uh, set. He used the term what we call nervous feet. He looked, 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 and looked, and then he went to throw out to Warford, and uh, he threw it low, hit the ground. Brings up second down and 10. Clemson has gone three downs and out the last two times with the ball. Priester has not carried in a hound dog's age. Here's Green, the pass out complete to Wofford. He is close to a first down. He'll come up probably about a half a yard shy at the 30 yard line. Delon Parrish in on the tackle, the sophomore from Columbia, Maryland. David Zadell had some help. But interestingly enough, Bill, Clemson Tigers have gone away from what made them so successful a week ago, and that is riding the back of Raymond Priester. Yeah, what made them so successful the early start of this ball game? They've gone away from it. But they're third and one here, and a chance to turn third into first. Yeah. 
Here comes a handoff to the fullback Witherspoon, and he might have been tripped up. Well, he got tripped, but I think he got the needed yardage to get to first down. Let's see the spot will determine whether he gets it or not. Calvin Shackelford was in on the stop. As they unpile, let's take a look at what could be the turning point of this first half and possibly the game. It's something that Bill Dooley referred to after Raymond Priester scored. Clemson lines up for what they feel is an automatic extra point, but David Richardson shanks one wide to the left. He misses. That made it 6-0. But allowed Wake Forest when they came down the field to take the lead. And right now, that's standing as the margin in this ball game, and thus our turning point of this first half. We've got a Clemson player, not only a measurement here, but a Clemson player hurt. Trying to spot who that is. And it looks like it's going to be Corey Halsey. The left guard, a sophomore from Lula, Georgia. That is Corey Halsey on his back. Six foot seven, 335 pounds. Say the biggest offensive line in the history of Clemson. And you know, Coach Bobby Dodd, the, the great football coach at Georgia Tech, always said the extra point was the most important in play in football. You've got to count on that extra point. It's got to be automatic. If you miss it, then you're in for trouble. Clemson stares that in the face. Let's go to the sidelines for our preview at halftime with Mike Hogwood. I think we've got an exciting halftime coming up, Steve, and we'll have our regular features, our best of the ACC, our play of the week, and we'll also have a Wake Forest player from the 70s, James McDougal, who is really proud of what the Deacons have done this year. His Wake Forest teams also had some good seasons and went to a bowl game. It is homecoming here at Wake Forest. So James McDougal, uh, an ex-deacon I'm sure many ACC fans remember, will be joining us at halftime. Here's Corey Halsey headed off the field. Now here comes the measurement. Clemson's got their first down, but at what cost? Let's see the penalty. Let's see the injury to Corey Halsey. Definitely one right there. He's driving his feet. Someone falls right over the back of his leg. And of course, that's what uh, injures him. He's hurt his leg. Someone falling right over the back of it. Needn't tell you that was somewhat unnatural. Elon Green on first and ten. Clemson going to the air, faxing her in per pursuit, and Elon Green will carry himself in front of his own bench and get up field for about a two-yard gain. Dustin Lyman runs him out. Well, he did a great job of scrambling. And getting out of the uh, out of the rush of the Wake Forest would be tacklers. You know that that looks like old Neil on Green. Now he's moving around back there very well, scrambling, not getting caught with the blitz. We've got a Wake Forest player injured, and that's Fatsinger. Robert Fatsinger is hurt before a play even gets off, and he'll come to the sideline. That brings Fred Robbins into the ball game, and Clinton Wilburn. So the attrition rate starting to climb on both sides. Kuklik already gone for at least for the first half. We'll see what he's got left in the second half. And now Fatsinger heads to the sideline. Mike Cogwood's been pretty busy. Second down and eight. Ball at the 32. Green with Priester and Lamont Hall in the backfield. Priester hasn't seen the ball this quarter. Pass is complete to Brian Wofford, and Wofford's brought down at the 39-yard line. It'll be a gain of seven. It'll be a yard shy of the first down. D'Angelo Solomon brought him down. Well, Clemson is uh, mixing up the pocket. They're moving the ball around. Sometimes they're dropping back. Sometimes they're sprinting out. They're doing a good job of keeping the Wake Forest defense from not being able to get up the field on them and rush it. But they've gone away from what's Clemson football, and that's running the ball. Priester carried the ball 36 times last week. This afternoon, he has under five. Third down. Clemson trailing by a point. Witherspoon gets the call, and it looks like he's picked up first down yardage. Terry Witherspoon, number 26 carries. Terry Witherspoon on the carry. Clinton Wilburn, a sophomore from Oklahoma City. On the tackle, there's Witherspoon. And the fullback now has almost as many as Priester. Well, you see the surge by the offensive line of Clemson as they double team big number 90, Fred Robbins. And of course, that allows the fullback to hit up in there 
and get the needed yards. Terry Witherspoon. There's Robbins. He looks like he's limping off now. Got A.J. Joyner out with a knee. Shackelford already spelling him, and Fatsinger's already gone to the sidelines once. He has not returned yet. Wake Forest losing some linemen there. 2.13 left in this first half. Wake Forest leading 10-9. Clemson with the football at the 41-yard line. Their own. Green to throw out to the flats to Tony Horn. Horn gets rid of Solomon and is headed upfield. Myers drives him out. And a flag down on the play. Probably a face mask, Steve. This will add to what already is looking like a 20-yard game. You know, the athletic ability of Tony Horn is unbelievable. That's a face mask. He goes up and catches a ball that's very high. A lot of people couldn't have gone up and made that catch. Let's take a look at it. Neil on Green throws it. It's high. Watch him catch it and pull it down. Good play. He went right underneath the arms of D'Angelo Solomon, number three, and then comes over and Myers, number 38, the free safety, makes the tackle. Let's look at it again. What an athletic ability play. Tony Horn can make things happen. He's a senior out of Rockingham, North Carolina. Neilon Green quite happy with the result. Second pass reception by Horn. He came in needing nine to set a single season record. Here's the slip screen. It is complete to Lawyer. That's Mal Lawyer, the sophomore from Charleston. The fleet and Clemson going by air down the field to the 29-yard line. That was good execution, Steve. Let's take a look at it. There's Lawyer, number 84. The blockers are out in front. You can see them there. There's Priester, number 27, making a block. And, of course, he picks up about six or seven yards on that play. And the 12th attempt of the day becomes a new Clemson record. Most pass attempts in a season. 203 for Neilon Green. Rolls out again on second and five. Headed for the sidelines. And he's chased out of bounds by David Zadell. And it's going to be for about a two-yard gain, or maybe a one-yard gain, with a minute 16 left to go. Clemson moving themselves in position. They are down by a point. They have a minute 16, and they have all of their timeouts left. Well, this is where Green is so effective. He, if he can't find that open receiver, he has the ability to pull that ball down. This is a big third down play right here, Steve. He's got to make this convert on this one. Third and four. Clemson trailing by one, but they're in Wake Forest territory. Big third down play here. Green out of the shotgun. Pass is complete to Priester. He falls down. Question is, did he get the first down? Let's see what the mark is going to be. It's going to be close enough to measure as Priester goes to the field. Oh, if he hadn't, have, if he hadn't have slipped, he would have made big yardage. He had the blockers out in front of him. The screen was set up perfectly. It looks as if, well, it looks like the the wet turf uh, from the rain earlier. Probably wet over on the sidelines. Let's take a look at it. Green looks downfield, does a good job. There's Priester, 27. Look at the blockers in front. Outstanding job right there, and he just slips. Of course, that's natural because of the crown of this football field. It's going to be wet on the sidelines. Took rain all night. And that's bad on the ankles. First down for Clemson, and the pass complete to Horn. He's battling out there with DeLon Parrish. And it is going to be complete, but not much gain. And now the clock stops with 42 seconds as Clemson spends a time out here. Well, that was a big play by Parrish, a defensive back. Green throws it out to Horn. Horn puts a good move on him, but he's not able to get away from Parrish. And then D'Angelo Solomon, number three, comes up and assists on the tackle. <laughs> so with timeout on the field, Clemson is going to talk things over here, looking at second down and six. They're at the 20 with 42 seconds left and two timeouts left. What does Richardson have for a foot? Well, he hit a 52-yarder. As far as wind conditions right now, it's swirling at that end of the end zone. But this would be a makeable kick if indeed they get down to that. And you have to start thinking about it with as little time as you have remaining in this first half. Well, you know, the surprising thing to me, Steve, is that Clemson has gone away from what they do best, 
and that's run the football. But they're moving the ball right now, throwing it. But their game plan, I thought, was to take the ball and go straight at Wake Forest. And they said, if we are able to run on them and we don't turn it over, we think we have a good chance of winning the ball game. And it may come to that eventually, although this could be a serious blow to that game plan as Raymond Priester heads off to the locker room at halftime. Well, you lose a big play football player like Priester, that's really going to hurt your running game. He's really limping. And when you're a running back, that's not good at all. Now the injury rate is starting to climb here. The two most prominent performers coming into this game, Priester for Clemson and Kuklik for Wake Forest will be on the sidelines here at the end of the first half. Neilon Green from the shotgun moves out of the pocket himself inside the 20 and gains some big yardage down to the 15 yard line. He's going to be close to a first down. There's another timeout here called and this one is going to be taken by it's taken by Clemson. Kelvin Jones in on the tackle as they stop Neilon Green a yard shy from the first down. Well, they still have one timeout remaining, and they're in good shape. 34 seconds left on the clock, so they have an opportunity to, to try to get the first down, stop the clock, and then they can run the clock play. So they, if they can manage good clock management right here, they'll be in good shape. But they need to get about a yard and a half, actually third and two, to get the first down here and keep themselves alive for a touchdown and at least a field goal. Another injury and this one that's Corey Halsey who was helped off the field a little while ago. Notice they helped the backs into the locker room. The lineman is the agent <laughs> fighting yourself there. Now the well, on you somewhere down there. Well that's not that's what you call the old blue collar worker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he doesn't need any guidance right. That's exactly right. <laughs> Anyone six foot seven three hundred thirty five pounds can uh, make his way around anyway. Well nobody's going to stop him. That's for sure. That's for sure. All right third down and two a long two Sam Sanders is in the backfield now for Clemson Clemson trailing 10 to 9 they have one timeout remaining there's 34 seconds left to go in his first half a white knuckler here in Winston Salem Elon Green out of the shotgun he's been there all this drive Green looking almost oh, intercepted oh. broken up in the middle by Dustin Lyman the sophomore from Boulder, Colorado, almost picked off the Neilon Green pass, bringing on the kicking team. Well, that was a big play by Dustin Lyman. He was in the right spot at the right time. This will be a 34-yard kick for David Richardson out of the hold of Kevin Lair. David Richardson, number 29. He's already hit a 52-yarder. This one will be now the wind starts kicking up in that end zone. Career best earlier. It's down, it's up, and it is good. And the Clemson Tigers retake the lead with 27 seconds left to go in this first half. Our third field goal of this first half. And the Tigers are out in front. David Richardson, his second of the day in three attempts, and he hits one to make it 12 to 10. Well, that was a good drive by Clemson. Most of it in the air. Let's get out of the sidelines. Mike Hogwood is going to talk about a very special person. You're exactly right, Steve. All of us remember earlier in this season, the Carolina-Virginia game, when referee Jim Knight was stricken with a heart attack on the field and had to be resuscitated there, and we've all been concerned about it. There is some great news today. Jim Knight is here at Grove Stadium at Winston-Salem, and before the game, he came down and shook hands, and you can tell that uh, his fellow referees were certainly glad to see him, just as all of us are. He's enjoying the game in the press box. Still says he isn't doing a whole lot yet, but hopes to one day officiate again, and, and we're just glad that he's up and around. That was a very, very scary moment, and uh, a lot of folks from around the league's prayers have been with Jim Knight, and he says he wants to thank everyone who has sent a card and has uh, helped him in some way in his recovery, and we're glad to see him here today, Steve. We're standing there talking to William Wampler, Wampler from both officials from the Charlotte area, Wampler from Huntersville, and Jim Knight from, of course, Charlotte, and uh, well, he's a great guy. I've had him in many a ball game and uh, went to Europe with him. And, uh, you know, I went over to see him in the hospital and he was sitting up in bed. He said, I'm ready to get back out on the field. I said, not quite yet, Jeff. Just hold it another week or so, please. 27 seconds left to go. 
He also said he had a craving for barbecue, and of course that's <laughs> off the that's off the diet now. Yeah, that's right. Pretty much. I'll eat his share, however. Especially when we go to Raleigh. Here comes the kick by Richardson. And it'll sail out of the end zone. Well, let's see. Is it going to? Yes, it's going to be marked out yeah. of the end zone. And it'll be a touchback. First and 10 now for Wake Forest. And they'll have 27 seconds and three timeouts and 80 yards of real estate to cover for Ben Sankey as he comes back out onto the field. So Sankey, who's had a pretty good start of things, coming in for the injured Brian Kuglick, who has an injured right knee. His status Carson for the remainder for of the Wake afternoon Forest uncertain. The but it's Sankey's game right now, and uh, he's proven to be quite capable. He's driven them twice to a field goal and then to a field goal attempt that missed as it hit the left goal post. On first down, here comes Herman Lewis. And Lewis gets another first down out to the 31 yard line. That stops the clock with 21 seconds left. Well, in this situation, Steve, I think what the young quarterback uh, will keep it on the ground, not take any chances of throwing, putting it up in the air, and let Clemson get an interception and give it a full. Here's a good look now at Herman Lewis. Herman makes a good break. He finds a soft spot in the defense and cuts back to his left. He had good linebacking on the left side. Gaskell on a key block there. Here comes the pitch again. Oh, this is, oh there's drama in the backfield, but Lewis wisely gets down on it at the 23-yard line. It'll be a loss of seven on the play, but that'll end the first half of action. And let's go down to the sidelines. Mike Hogwood standing by with Clemson's Tommy West. Well, Steve, we're still waiting for Tommy West to come our way. He'll be here in just a second. Here he comes, and uh, we'll walk over and grab him. It's been an interesting first half. 12 to 10 is our score, and Tommy, uh, it's a dogfight here just as you expected. Exactly what I expected. All right, both teams, pretty good first half, really. Both teams getting after each other, not a lot of turnovers. Uh, so who can go after it in the second half? What do you guys have to do better or have to do different here in the second half? All right, the big key is for us to play third down on defense. We're, we're, we've been really bad on third down so far, and we've had them in third and long. I uh, thought we played good against the run. Offensively, we just got to get some consistency, get back, be able to run the ball a little bit and play action. I know you're concerned about Raymond Priester. Any word on it? Not yet. No, we'll check him when we get in. Okay, that is Tommy West, who is concerned about his star running back. Right now, though, his Clemson Tigers out in front of the Wake Forest Deacons. 12-10. We're at halftime, and our halftime activities are straight ahead here from Grove Stadium. Today's game is brought to you by... Exxon, the best way to get there. By Food Lion, extra low prices and more. By Geico Direct, the sensible alternative. And by Bell South. Bell South is proud to be the official telecommunications company of the ACC. Jefferson Pilot Sports, exclusive presentation of the ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by... Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide Agent nearest you. By Alltel, where computing and communications converge. Alltel, always more than you thought. By Mazda, experienced cars and trucks built with a passion for the road. Mazda. And by Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Mike Hogwood here on the Wake Forest sideline. Jim Caldwell, what'd you tell him at halftime? Well, the big thing is that we wanted to stop making mistakes. Our offense was going in the wrong direction there a couple of series. Uh, but nevertheless, if we just hang in there and tackle a little bit better, uh, we're right in this ball game. You have confidence in Ben Sankey, your backup. Oh, He's done a good job. No question about it. Ben was just lacking some snaps. He's a good quarterback. He's good enough to win this game. All right, that's the word from Jim Caldwell, Steve. Lots of confidence there. The word on Brian Kuklick is that his, he has a bruised right knee and it hurts him every time he pushes off. Wake has other injury problems. Robert Fatzinger has a hamstring that is bothering him. He is doubtful. And Fred Robbins also has a knee problem. He is doubtful for the second half. So Wake has concerns, but one of them obviously isn't Ben Sankey as uh, uh, Jim Caldwell was pretty confident in his young Well, that's for sure. He's an outstanding, uh, done an outstanding job, but you're concerned about the other injuries that Wake Forest has, not Ben Sankey. And in ready to kick off now for Wake Forest is going to be Matthew Burdick. And Clemson will have the football first time out. I did see Brandon Streeter warming up on the sideline. I did not see 
Raymond Priester and Antoine Edwards comes out of there with a the ball. Edwards with lots of running room and a great return for Clemson out to the 47 yard line. And that's where Clemson will open up with great field position. Jeffrey Myers in on the stop. Neilon Green comes out to lead the Clemson offense. Well, the Clemson kickoff return team did an excellent job. Let's take a look at it. Watch the blocks. There's Horn right there in front of him, number seven. He's leading him. And Edwards, there's Horn making a block. Edwards does a good job of cutting back. And as you mentioned, great field position. Elon Green and it is Sam Sanders at the tailback position instead of Raymond Priester. Still waiting for an update from Clemson. Here's Neilon Green going to the air, and he's got Wofford a step ahead of the defense. D'Angelo Solomon covering on the play. Just a little bit too much air under that one for Neilon Green. Well, he aired it out. It, uh, oh, Wofford had him beat, but just a little over the fingertips uh, for him to catch it. Here's what Clemson did. They scored the first two times they had the ball, three downs and out the next two, and then a field goal on a nice two and a half minute drill for Clemson to finish out the half. Here's a look at it right here. He's wide open. Brian Warford has the defensive back beaten, uh, Solomon, and he just overthrows the football. Now Lawyer and Gardner are in as wide receivers, and under center is gonna be Neilon Green. Play action to the fullback. The pitch to Xanders on the corner. And he is wrestled down by DeLong Parrish. Well, DeLong's having a good day. He's coming up from a strong safety position and makes a big tackle on Saunders from his tailback spot. Wake Forest. Here's a take a look at it right here. Nelon comes out, pitches out to Saunders. And there's Parrish. And number three is coming in. D'Angelo Solomon right to, to clean up. Wake Forest defense doing a good job. Three for seven on third down conversion for Clemson. They lead in this ball game 12 to 10. And they are two yards shy of midfield. Out of the shotgun, Green. Pass is complete to Tony Horn. And Horn is going to go all the way. Touchdown, Clemson. What a big play. Wake Forest had the blitz on. They caught him in man coverage. And Tony Horn time you give him a step he's going to take advantage of it and that'll be the results a touchdown and a record in the making the 12th completion is Clemson's career completion leader with 134 passing Tommy Kendrick in 1970 and here's how it looked there's Green putting the ball right on the money to Tony Horn and look at the speed of Horn as he just outruns the secondary as Jeffrey Myers was coming on the play Oh. The extra point attempt, no good again by David Richardson. He's missed two today, but the Clemson Tigers lead it 18 to 10. Two missed extra points that may come back and haunt the Tigers. That's very unusual to have. Watch this, watch this route here by number seven, Tony Horn. And that was Myers covering, just couldn't catch it. And 24 was in there. Damon Daniels was also trying to cover. Let's take a look at the extra point. Uh, he just hooked it. Looks like my golf shot. <laughs> and there were no woods. Well, that's that's too bad. That's two big extra points that uh, could really, you know, made it uh, 10 to 20. That'd be a touchdown and a field goal. Now it's just 10 to 18. Well, another two records actually fell. We mentioned the completion record, but his 29th touchdown pass is a new Clemson career touchdown pass record. And there you see the completions in a season. He smashed that, held by Tommy Kendrick previously. Neilon Green, a record-breaking season, and with Raymond Priester not answering the call here in the second half, he becomes a very important factor for the Clemson Tigers, who lead it 18 to 10 with 13:48 and quick strike capability on the third play of the drive. Neilon Green connects for 52 yards upstairs to Tony Horn. Well, you talked about. Uh... Ben Sankey coming in and filling in for Brian Cooklick. Now someone's got to step up for Priester, and it's got to be Sam Saunders or else Jarvis Austin. So they're going to be have the responsibility. Well, right now the Clemson defense will have to step up here. They haven't been able to stop 
Wake Forest that effectively. Let's see if they can do it this time out. Savage is deep in the end zone. He'll not come out. And Wake Forest will get the ball at their own 20 yard line, first and 10. Steve Martin, Bill Dooley, Mike Hogwood here on a sun splash day that truthfully we didn't expect rain most of the morning. But it's a beautiful day, this first day of November. Our nationwide insurance ACC Scholar Athlete of the Week is offensive tackle Ryan Rizell from the University of Maryland. A junior from Erie, Pennsylvania, has a 3.3 grade point average in criminal justice. We congratulate Ryan Rizell, our nationwide Scholar Athlete of the Week. First and ten for the Demon Deacon Sankey working out of the shotgun. Has a man in motion. He'll look instead to Desmond Clark complete at the 26 yard line. Complete to number 83. Desmond Clark, Anthony Simmons, number 41, making the tackle. As Desmond Clark picks up the reception, that's his seventh of the day. And here's what Wake has done. Their first possession, three downs and out, but then the, the pass on the yards, second possession second to Tabidi Davis. The a field goal on Sankey's first drive. He took over on drive number three, and then a missed field goal of 37 yards that just kissed the upright and glanced out by Matthew Bearden. Sankey on the day, five for 11 and 73 yards. Positive yard. Well, you've got to be impressed with uh, the way Sankey is performing. Uh, the last time he just stepped right up and threw the ball. This time he gets pressure and he hangs in there and he's able to avoid it to get outside. And he gets the needed yardage for the first down. So, you know, he is performing very well at quarterback for Wake Forest. And a Wake Forest offensive line had a hat on everybody that time to give Sankey room to make a decision. Clemson leading 18 to 10. Elon Green, a 52 yard hookup with Tony Horn. First down, Sankey patiently bails out to Jamie Deese, and Deese is up all the way to the 45 yard line. A gain of 13. Mon Wilson, fifth year senior from Tupelo, Mississippi, on the tackle. Well, Jamie Deese is really an unsung hero. He comes up with the big play. Clemson's only rushing three people, they're defending, and as Deese. He's able to outrun the linebacker. So he, that's uh, Abdul that was the strong end, the rush end. Adrian uh, Dingle right there, 52. Deese, the sophomore from Laurenburg, North Carolina. First down play, Zanders, or rather Sankey, is tripped up. It's like Jolly and Bromwell and Simmons. Has that man again, number 41, Simmons. He's around the football. What an outstanding linebacker. Priester's back on the sidelines now for Clemson. And we'll see if he's going to get himself back into the fray here. Looks like they're looking at his right ankle. We saw him turn that ankle, and he's still pretty game on it. I'm not sure if he's coming back. When the tour loosened up on the crown after catching a screen pass. On second down, Sankey stands in the pocket. But had to get rid of it under extreme pressure there that time. And uh, coming in on the play was Donald Broomfield. Let's go down to the sidelines. Mike Hogwood has more on Raymond Priester. Steve, you're just talking about number 27 for Clemson. I just talked to the trainer, and he says he has told Tommy West that it's okay to put Priester back in the game. It's now up to Raymond and Coach West whether or not he's going to play. He's trying hard to get that ankle loose over here on the sideline, but he is cleared to play. With his helmet on, looks like he's intent on doing something next time out. Third down and nine now for Wake Forest, trailing by eight early on in the third quarter. Sankey out of the shotgun, big blitz is on. He throws it to Morgan Kane, but there's nothing doing. And guess who? That's, that's number 41, Mr. Simmons. I'm going to call him Mr. because he's around that ball. Good what? pressure put on Stanky, and he had to throw it probably a second more than uh, quicker than he wanted to. Let's take a look at it. As Stanky, he's being pressured. He throws it out to Kane, and there's 41. What an outstanding play, and also Abdul, big number 53, 6'6", 230 pounds. Fourth down and 16. Punt coming up now here for Wake Forest. And the kick booms off the foot of Tripp Moore. And boy, 
Lots of rough stuff going on down there that time around Tony Horn. <laughs> well, I believe the Wake Forest man got blocked uh, into Tony Horn, and uh, had he have not, that would have been an interference with his right to catch the football. There's Raymond Priester, and he's standing next to Tommy West. West would like to see him out on the field, but uh, the ankle apparently a little too tender for Priester at this point in time. As far as Fred Robbins is concerned, one of two defensive players of Wake Forest suffering injuries in the first half. That hamstring is not too painful for him. He's going to come back and try to play, and he's lined up there with Clinton Wilburn. Robert Fatzinger is out and probably doubtful for the remainder of the afternoon. And the focus now, Bill Dooley, falls on this Wake Forest defense. Clemson moved the ball pretty good. Neilon Green with a big connection to Tony Horn. Wake's got to do the job defensively here now. Well, they certainly have, but it's good to have Robbins back for Wake Forest back in that ball game. Sam Sanders is in the backfield. Witherspoon is the fullback, and here's Sanders. And Actually, you know who made that play? Big Fred Robbins, number 90. He's a load up in that middle. Helped by Kelvin Jones, Lamont Hall had the key block. Let's take a look at it. Here comes number 90 right across, right there. Makes the stop on number six. And Robin is just big. He's 6'5", 312 pounds, and very, very tough to move out of there. What knee problem. <laughs> Second down and nine. Terry Witherspoon is in the ball game now. As well as Xanders, and they'll go to Witherspoon, and Witherspoon has a big opening. Myers and D'Angelo Solomon chase him down, but not before Clemson pushes it out to the 35-yard line, and that's just the type of play that Tommy West wants his team to establish. Exactly right. That was a good call by the offensive coaches of Clemson. A quick opener. And they catch Fred Robbins stunning to the inside movement, and Weatherspoon just pops it up in there. Good play. That's stopped by D'Angelo Solomon, number three. Weatherspoon, the fullback. They put Lamont Hall back there a few moments ago, and that play to Sanders. First and ten. Play fake to Sanders, and here comes Neilon Green. There is Fred Robbins. And Green will have to tuck it under and get tackled at the 38-yard line by D'Angelo Solomon. It'll be a gain of three. But again, Fred Robbins in there to put the pressure on and force Green out of the pocket. That's right. Nealon pulls it down, but you've got to be impressed with the tackling of the Wake Forest second secondary. D'Angelo Solomon makes an outstanding open field tackle on Nealon Green, and Nealon's a good open field runner. Watch this. Number three come up. Make the tackle, brings him down, and you know, just a two or three yard gain. Angelo Solomon comes to the sideline here momentarily. And that brings Keyshawn Smith into the ball game to finish out at cornerback. Here comes Sanders. And Sanders is brought down by Clinton Wilburn after a two or three yard gain on second and seven. Pushes the ball out over the 40 yard line to the 41. Well, he good, gave good second effort running. Here you go. This is going to be a big third down play right here. They've got to convert on this to keep those chains moving. And as you mentioned earlier, Clemson has not been that effective on third down plays in this ballgame. Well, last time they went to third down, Coach, they hit a 52-yard strike to Tony Horn. Well, that was a big one. But <laughs> that was a big one. But prior to that, they were three out of seven. They're That's now right. four out of eight. And they're looking at third and four with an eight-point lead. Neilon Green with a rollout after the pay fake and the pass complete to the tight end, Lamont Hall. Hall from Clover, South Carolina, who almost went to a smaller school to play basketball, was talked out of it at the last minute and uh, hasn't regretted it. The pass gets in the midfield. Well, let's take a look at it. The Clemson coaches said they were going to get Lamont Hall more involved in the game, in the passing game, and they certainly have. He's been an outstanding blocker, and now he's shown that he can catch the football. Key third down conversion, two in a row for Neilon Green. Play fake again. Rushes on. Green on his own. And Green tripped up, fumbled the football, but the ground caused it. The ground caused that, so it's, that's not a fumble. And he is close to the first down, and I think he's got it. David Zadell makes sure there's no further progress, and it's close enough to be measured. Well, let's, let's take a look at it. This is the thing about Neilon Green. He's able to pull that ball down, shows the ability, 
to get it up if he can't find the open receiver that's one of the big uh, keys to him at quarterback. He did this against NC State and of course this enabled them to win the football game. Uh, Clemson was able to do that against NC State and win the game. Clemson, yeah, pick up the first down. And so Clemson moving the football. Well, Raymond Priester hasn't been a factor in this game, but Neilon Green has. And in a very positive way for the Clemson Tigers, who have an eight point lead. Well, they had to shift it to Neilon Green and to Tony Horn because they lost one big football player. They got the other two that has to carry the load. With a spoon and the eye at the fullback, Sam Sanders behind him. Here comes a handoff to Sanders, and there's a big hole there. And Sanders pushes his way over the 35 yard line of Wake Forest down to the 33. Devon Mellerson, sophomore at 6'5, 298 out of Baltimore on a tackle. Well, that's just good line blocking by the right side. Look at number big 70, 6'6, 230, 300 pounds, Holland Postel. He did an excellent job from his right tackle position of getting movement. Junior out of Somerville, South Carolina, second down and four. Ball at the 33 of Wake Forest, Clemson driving. This one started at their own 15. Xanders again takes the end, but a big tackle by D'Angelo Solomon and a flag on the play. A flag on the play. They've got the yardage for first down, but let's see what the call is going to be. It's got it. Terry McCauley gathering the forces here for an opinion on this one. It took place at the 31. It's going to be against Clemson, I believe. Well, holding. holding. On the offense. Ten yards, spot of the foul, second down. So mark it from the spot of the foul, which was the 31-yard line. There's that offensive line, Bill, and there. it's a big one. They are big, the biggest in history, and they do a good job of coming off that ball and getting a good line surge. You know, I wanted to say something about D'Angelo Solomon. He's five foot eight, 160 pounds. He plays like he's 6'4", 220 pounds. He really does an excellent job in that secondary. And guess who's back? Raymond Priester's in the backfield. Neilon Green out of the shotgun on second and 12 from the 41. Back to throw, the pass is incomplete. Oh. Tony Horn was open, but he was on one knee. Well, that's too bad. That would have been a big play. He had good protection. Green had time to set his feet. It was just a little low, but uh, just wasn't able to bring it in. That's unusual. Tony Horn normally makes those catches because he's got great athletic ability. Now that brings up third down. 641 left to go. Raymond Priester back in the game. It looked like he was back in as a receiver that time. He's already scored once today. Lamont Hall takes a spot in the backfield as protection for Nelon Green out of the shotgun. Clemson up by eight. They're five of nine on third. Priester lets it go upfield, and it is caught. Oh, what a touchdown! <laughs> Gardner's first career <laughs> touchdown comes at a very opportune moment on a play that looked like pass interference against the defense. He emerged from behind him and scores, and Clemson moves up on top by 14. What a play. Nilon and Green displayed great patience, waiting and waiting and waiting before he let that ball go. And as you mentioned, Ron Gardner came up with the big Reception. Let's take a look at it. He waits. He waits. He pulls the ball down. He looks at him, and now he throws it. There's Rod Gardner getting behind Damon Daniel, number 24, for the reception for a touchdown. Big play by Clemson. Here comes Huge some, play. Here comes some drama here from David Richardson. This time, automatic through the uprights. Points good by number 29. And a flag David down Richardson. on the field. Huh. And let's see what the call is going to be. It's against, it's against Clemson. So bring the Wake Forest defense back out. And now what looked to be an automatic scene, though David Richardson has missed two point afters, is not so automatic anymore when you tack on a 10 yard penalty and push it back. On the kicking team, 10 yard spot on the foul. Well, David's five. done a better job from field goal range than he has from extra point range. So it might be in David's favor to move the ball back a little bit. Now Wake Forest decides to go with the percentages. As far as real estate is concerned, and not on chance. Both.
both of the ones that he missed. Well, they were right dead on too. This one will be a point after, but it has the same effect as a 35-yard field goal. Right dead on down the middle, and he gets it. So David Richardson said, back me up another 10 That's yards. Exactly. Back me again. up every time after we score, we're a lot better off. 634 left to go. Neilon Green, second touchdown strike of this second half as the Tigers up by 15. The Clemson Tigers now have posted a 25-10 lead on the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. 6.34 left to go in this third quarter from Grove Stadium in Winston-Salem. There's the scoring drive. They marched 10 plays, 85 yards. Took them 4.43 to do it. And Rob Gardner hauled in the touchdown pass. Now the 30th career touchdown strike from Neilon Green, establishing a new record each time for the quarterback out of Yonkers, New York, by way of Loris, South Carolina now. And Clemson asserts itself here, 25-10, and they've got the Deacons in a hole. But that time, Bill, what we saw on that drive was Wake, well, was Clemson go back to what you felt they needed to do, and that is establish the run. And Neilon Green himself had a couple of big carries. Well, he certainly did, and uh, they came up with two big plays in the passing game for the last two scores. Savage will bring this one out from two yards deep. And catching him from behind. What a tackle. And a state on the play by Raheem Abdullah on the tackle. Looked like Savage had it well set up. Well, he's dangerous. Savage is very dangerous. And there's Raheem Abdullah, who's a first string. Bandit, uh, defensive end, comes in and makes a big play. He can run now. Abdullah can run. Good speed. Sankey now looking at first and 10 from his own 14. And carrying the ball is going to be Chris McCoy. And he moves it up over the 20-yard line. Well, that was a quick hit or something that Wake Forest has not used. Let's take a look at it. Good block by Chris Gaskell, the center. He comes off. Hits the left guard, then bounces off and blocks the linebacker. Excellent play by Gaskell. Second down and three. Handoff goes to Morgan Kane this time, and he's got enough for the first down and puts it out over the 25-yard line. Morgan Kane. Terry Jolly, the true freshman from Fort Valley, Georgia, in on the play. We have yet to see a turnover in this game. Well, that's, uh, that's good discipline on both sides, on Clemson and Wake Forest's part. Wake Forest, 25 turnovers to 12 takeaways. Here's Morgan Kane, and Kane carries the ball over the 35-yard line. Now it is Wake Forest starting to pick up yardage on the ground. And it's an 11-yard gain to Marco Fox on the tackle as Wake Forest has gone to the no huddle. They're just coming out. They've selected 10 or 12 plays to run. And they hope they get the opportunity to run them all. Sankey out of the shotgun, all kinds of movement. Keen moved tackle. out of the slot early. <laughs> that's that's, that's Big Wolverton, number 76. You know, uh, they're mixing it up. They're lining up in the eye formation. Then they go into four wide outs in the shotgun. They're keeping Clemson off balance with their offensive formations. And they are running the football, which again allows them to do a better job in the passing game. Well, as you say, spreading the field lessens the number of people that Clemson can give up to the run. Out of the shotgun, Sankey. Sankey complete. And the pass is complete to Desmond Clark. It's taken away by Clemson. They all mark it down. Clark is still down, but he's short of the first down on the play. They'll mark it ahead to the 47-yard line, 46-yard line. The whistle had blown. Let's take a look at it. As you see Sankey back in the shotgun. That's good protection. He goes up inside. Simmons was coming. And as Desmond Clark bringing it in, you know, the, the size of the receivers of Wake Forest just makes it awfully difficult for those corners to defend. As uh, Simmons rushing from the outside. At the live action, here comes Sankey again. Low pass, but Jamie Deese has it. And Deese 
moves into Clemson territory at the 46-yard line. Mon Wilson in on the stop for Clemson. The Jamie Deese picks up another Demon Deacon first down. He's a clutch football player, Jamie Deese. He makes the play when you have to have it. Here's Sankey. Let's take a look at it. There's Deese catching the ball and just outruns big number 93, uh, Terry Bryant, a big freshman. Six receptions, 86 yards for Jamie Deese. And here comes Morgan Kane. And Wake Forest really executing on this drive. The no huddle offense has Clemson playing on their heels, and Wake Forest moves it to the 37-yard line. A gain of eight by Morgan Kane. Again, mixing it up between the run and the pass, keeping the Clemson defense off balance. That's very important. Second down and three coming. Deese and Tabidi Davis to the wide side. Sankey looking short side, oh. almost picked off. He was looking right at DeMarco Fox. <laughs> wow, DeMarco. Desmond Clark was in the area, <laughs> but it looked like he wanted to throw it to Fox in the worst way. And it surprised Fox had hit him right in the hands, and he just wasn't able to hold on to it. They took DeMarco out of the ball game. Let's take a look at it right there. Watch number 12. He's watching number 83. You can see his eyes looking focused on Desmond Clark, and he just at the last second tried to pick it up. Third down and three. Wake trailing 25-10 in our first sack of the day. It's Anthony Simmons. Yes, sir, Mr. Simmons. He is uh, just an outstanding football player. Uh, he leads the team in tackles. He's got 85 tackles going into this ball game, and 12 of those have been tackles for losses. Uh, like I say, he was an All-American. He has been one of the most outstanding linebackers ever to play in Clemson, and there's been a lot of outstanding ones down in Death Valley. Clock moving with 318 left to go in this third quarter, and Wake Forest forced to punt. Their second punt of the second half, Trip Moore back in punt formation. High snap, he's trying to plant it inside the 10. And good catch by Tony Horn at the 12, and it looks like Wake Forest may have gotten within that two-yard distance permitted. Well, that's what they call, let's uh, listen to the official, but you've got a two-yard radius all the way around the band. Five yard, kick catch interference on the that, kicking team. That's exactly Five what it was. Foul. First right here, let's take a look at it. As the Wake Forest man, you've got two yards. That's David Moore, number 28, that interfered with the opportunity for Tony Horn to field the football. Clemson has a 25-10 lead on the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. A little over three remaining will return after these messages from your local ACC station. Welcome back to Grove Stadium. Steve Martin here along with Bill Dooley and Mike Hogwood. A sun splashed first day of November. Clemson leading 25 10, and the Tigers have the football. Nelon Green has put the Tigers on top with two big touchdown passes of 52 and 41 yards. And this play goes to Sam Zanders, and he is sacked for a loss or thrown for a loss back to the 17 yard line. Devon Mellerson in on the tackle now for Wake Forest. Well, there wasn't much running room there. The uh, Clemson. Uh, Offensive line wasn't able to get any movement at all. Watch uh, the Clemson offensive line just wasn't able to move the big front of Wake Forest. So good job by the defensive front of Wake Forest. Mellison's a load to move at 298 pounds. Second down and long. Play fake. Nelon Green sells it well and goes to Lamont Hall who gets a little bit of running room out to the 26-yard line. D'Angelo Solomon in on the stop. It's a nine-yard gain, but it's still short of the first down. That's been a very effective play. It's a bootleg-style play. They fake to the tailback, comes out, and finds a big tight end, Lamont Hall, number 82, and there is D'Angelo Solomon, number three, the guy that's only 5'8 and plays six foot four. Elon Green's been playing big on third down the second half. Two big third down conversions. One for a 52-yard touchdown strike. This time he's going to stay on the ground, Sam Zanders. But the result is the same. It goes to first down out to the 32-yard line. A gain of six for Zanders. And Clemson keeps the chains moving as the 
third quarter streaks to an end. I remind you the announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Clemson lining up first and ten at zone 32. Witherspoon and Xanders lined up in the eye. Play fake, Nilon Green. Pocket disintegrates and Green is hit by Clinton Wilburn, finished off by Devon Mellerson. Well, big number 70, Wilburn did a good job of preventing Nilon Green from pulling that ball down and getting it up the field. And I think Wake Forest has got pretty good speed on uh, defense because they close fast when uh, someone starts to run that football. Let's take a look at it. Nelon's back to pass. Can't find a receiver. Pulls it down. And watch number 70. He comes in there. Clinton Wilburn, 6'4", 260-pound, 7-pound sophomore. Priester's back in the backfield now as a receiver. Green sets, fires, and hits Tony Horn. Horn over the middle of the field, reverses direction, and is brought down to the 32-yard line by D'Angelo Solomon. Tony Horn, number seven, D'Angelo Solomon. It is a 38-yard hookup, and it'll give Clemson first down at Wake Forest's 33-yard line. That ball is right on the money. You know, they say get the ball to your big play football players, and your big play player is Tony Horn. Watch him pull that ball in, and then after he catches it, he'll get up the field with it. He goes north and south. He's an outstanding player. Walking the walk, and now he's talking the talk. Inviting all comers now as Horn has had a big second half. Here's Nelon Green. And Green carries tacklers inside the 20. Down to the 16-yard line. David Zedell and Jeffrey Myers bring him down. And that'll just about bring it in to the third quarter of play. But Clemson has taken this third quarter over. And Neilon Green has been the key player. A 17-yard gain will put Clemson in four-down territory. And the Wake Forest 17 as will start the fourth quarter. 25-10, Clemson leading Wake through three. to Grove Stadium in Winston-Salem. Jefferson Pilot Sports brings you the ACC football game of the week, and it's been a good one, as Clemson has reasserted control in the third quarter, and they lead Wake Forest 25 to 10. Steve Martin along with Bill Dooley and Mike Hogwood on a beautiful November day. The wind's starting to pick up now as it blows across the top of the stadium, but Clemson now moving the ball. Neilon Green has piloted the Tigers to the 16-yard line of Wake Forest, first and 10 after a 17-yard gain capped the third quarter. The Tigers operating without their top running back, Raymond Priester, who turned an ankle. This time it's Terry Witherspoon who carries up over the 15-yard line down to the 13. But Neilon Green, Bill Dooley, has done the job here in the second half, stepping up with Priester out. Well, you're exactly right. When you lose a key player like Priester, someone's got to step forward. And uh, Neilon Green has done that along with Tony Horn, and this just done an outstanding job. Also, Clemson has to attribute some success to being able to run the football without Raymond Priester. They have Ter Terry Witherspoon, Neilon Green, and Sam Zanders to thank for that. Second down and seven. Ball at the Wake Forest 13. Green hands off to Zanders. The nice cutback gets him inside the 10. And it's going to be Dustin Lyman in on the tackle for Wake Forest after a three-yard, actually a four-yard gain. Here are the stats. Through three, Bill Dooley, the rushing yard starting to pile up for Clemson, especially in that third quarter. 68 of their 138 came there. Well, you're right. Saunders made a good cut going back across the green and finding a little daylight. He has taken up the slack, he and Weatherspoon, for the injured Raymond Priester. And Clemson has been perfect on third down in the second half at four for four. Xanders cuts back toward the seven yard line. Dropped down on the play by Dustin Lyman. Mark McCovic getting a rare call in place of David Zadell, who doesn't come out very often for Wake Forest. And that brings up fourth down, and it brings the kicking unit on. 
So Green didn't get there. So on fourth down and a yard, the kicking unit comes on to tack on possibly three more. Kevin Laird is going to be the holder. This will be a 25-yard kick, and it'll be right down the center of the field for David Richardson. Richardson has been perfect on two field goal attempts this afternoon, one from 52. He's missed two extra points. And now a flag on the play. The play clock runs out, and this will back Richardson up a little bit more. Dead ball. The lead game on the offense. Five yards. So this changes a a kick from 25 into a kick to 30 yards now for David Richardson. We had a 52 yarder in this end of the field. Wind swirling from right to left across his face, but not in his face. There's the kick. It is up, and it is good. Well, it has been all Clemson in this second half. David Richardson does a lot better when he's not closer to the goal. When he gets off from it, he's very true. 30 yards for that one. Clemson is up by 18. That was an excellent drive. The Clemson Tigers tack another field goal onto their lead, and they're up by 18. They've shut out Wake Forest in this second half. It's 28-10 at 1250. The fun and frolic continues here on Deacon Hill. But more important things await the Demon Deacons on the field. With three games remaining, including this one, this is their last home game, road games at Rutgers and at Florida State. The importance of the next 12 minutes and 50 seconds cannot be lost if Wake Forest entertains postseason hopes. Here comes the kick by Richardson. Savage anchors under it at the four. Savage cuts up field, but there's not much room. In on the tackle for Clemson is Harold Means, the backup inside linebacker. Here's Anthony Simmons. You know, a lot of people say, well, this season hasn't been as successful. He has 14.8 tackles a game last year, only 12 this year. However, he has a tackle every four plays last year and this year. So Simmons has been as effective, if not more so. You have to give credit to the Clemson offense for being effective and keeping them off the field. It's certainly been the case here in the second half. Xanders. Or rather, Sankey is back there to throw, and he is sacked. And thrown for a loss by Raymond White. Well, that was a big play. Raymond came in from the outside and just put the pressure on Ben Sankey. You know, one thing, Wake Forest cannot panic. They've got plenty of time left. Let's take a look at it. There's White right there, big number 97 coming in and pulling Sankey down. There's the Buckus Award list. And look at Anthony Simmons. Pretty good company, but Simmons, along with Brian Simmons of North Carolina, standing very tall. Here is Ben Sankey scrambling. And he brings it up over the 15, out to the 17-yard line. Here's the Buckus Award, but look at the ACC players here. Daryl Bush, Sam Cowart, also Kay Mays, and Brian Simmons. Half the list belongs to the ACC. It is the conference of the linebacker. <laughs> There's no doubt about it, and the fellow that made the last tackle was Simmons, 41, on Sankey. What a shock. Sankey's <laughs> pass is... The incomplete intended for Desmond Clark, and I don't think Michael Allen can cover him any better. Michael Allen was all over him and thought he should have had the interception, but just came up a little shot. Again, Wake Forest has a lot of time. They've got to play good defense here, and then they can get back in this ball game. Not panic. Only the second time today that Wake Forest has been three downs and out. It is their third punt of the second half, but they've hung on to the ball six and seven times each possession. And here's Trip Moore back to kick on fourth and 12. Long oh, ball goes into the end zone and he's tackled for a safety. The high snap. Rod Gardner makes sure he stayed down. The snap from Zelenka, Joe Zelenka, was high on the punt, 
And Trent Moore saw it go through his hands. Well, when it rains, it pours, and that's one of those plays right there that uh, really gets to you. We've got a down, injured Wake Forest player on the uh, field out there, and the trainers are trying to. Sports today. And that, looks, that looks like it's going to be Delon Parrish. Let's go to the sidelines for Mike Hogwood. As you might imagine, guys, the wind has really gone out of the Wake Forest sideline. Some of the seniors have been walking up and down trying to get the heads back up and pumped into the game. But as Coach Dooley said, there's a lot of time left. But these Wake players have their heads down right now, and uh, they've got to uh, get it back up and realize that this defense can uh, get a stop or so, and they can uh, get a couple of touchdowns and maybe be back in it. It's Four not going to be easy. On the Clemson side, on the other side, the defensive coaches have been telling the defense, turn up the te tempo, turn up the tempo, win the game right now. They got a three and out. That was just what they wanted. First Clemson safety in five years. November 14, 1992, they had a safety against Maryland. And here is the third quarter, Penn State. The injured player, that is DeLon Parrish, as we said, the sophomore from Columbia, Maryland, coming out. It's been all Clemson in the second half. It was 12 10 at intermission, and Wake Forest liked their position in the game. Let's have another look at our Nation's Bank ACC Salute to Excellence question. Who is the only ACC team to beat Florida State since the Seminoles joined the league? The answer? Virginia upset Florida State 33-28 back in 1995. Of course, uh, Florida State returned the favor brutally, I might add, <laughs> last week. Well, they certainly did. You know, uh, Mike was talking about it. Wake Forest has an explosive offense. They can get back in this game because of the great receiving ability uh, of the Wake Forest. Uh, play Desmond Clark, to B.B. Davis, Jamie Deese. They can get back in it. Trip Moore on the free kick. And going back to get it is Edwards, but he goes down at the 29-yard line. And that'll play. We'll come back there. Moore knocks Edwards to his back. And now we've got some words not of wisdom but of <laughs> anger and quickly the officials chase both teams to the sidelines and nothing ensues so Clemson will have the ball at their own 28 yard line Here, here's a little uh, look at it right there he just gives him a good shove and uh, first and ten for Clemson he, at the 29 he wasn't ready for it so it knocked him off of off balance to the ground Tommy West talking to Antoine Edwards Edwards sat out with a suspension last week, got moved to cornerback, however, this week as Carswell came in and played very well. First and ten for Clemson at their own 28. Milan Green. Pitch to Xanders on the corner, and D'Angelo Solomon snipped it out like he was in the Clemson huddle. Very good play by Solomon. He'll defeat the block of the wide receiver. Let's take a look at it uh, when he comes down the line. There's the damage in the second half. Clemson, big plays with Tony Horn twice on big pass plays of 38 and 52 yards. One of those for a score. And Elon Green's been able to move the chains without his top running back, Raymond Priester. Play action, rushes on. Jones in pursuit of Green. The pass complete to Tony Horn. Neilon Green has got it going this afternoon. It's good for a first down at the 41-yard line. Tony Horn, a semifinalist for the Bolitnikoff Award, and we have two ACC players in contention for that, although many think Randy Moss is probably the front runner there. Tony Horn trying to become the first Clemson receiver to lead the ACC since Jerry Butler did it in 1980. And Horn on the afternoon, six receptions, 123 yards, needing three more to set a single season record. Milan Green, play fake. Pass is incomplete intended for Horn, right off his numbers. Well, not many times does he drop it, but uh, he did on that occasion. Milan Green's just having an outstanding day today. Let's take a look at it. Green goes back, setting his feet. The ball's a little low down around the shoestrings, but Tony Horn is not able to come up with it. Just a little low. Tony Horn stands on the sidelines. 
Elon Green on second down and 10. The pitch to Zanders. He's got Witherspoon out in front. And wow, DeLong Parrish, who was injured on the safety a few moments ago, comes up and delivers the hit. Well, he certainly does. And again, D'Angelo Solomon, number three, comes up and makes him go outside. And then Delane Stewart picks it up. Delane Parrish. All right, here it is right here. Watch Parrish. Number five. Boy, what an outstanding job of coming up from the secondary and making the hit on Saunders. He and Angelo Solomon have done a great job uh, from the secondary. Clemson 7 of 12 on third down. Leading in the ball game, 30 to 10. Elon Green looking upstairs. It is complete to Tony Horn at the 30-yard line. DeLon Parrish on the coverage. A 29-yard hookup from Elon Green, who continues to dial in receiver. Let's watch it. He steps up. He does a good job of avoiding the rush, stepping up in the pocket, and what a combination from Elon Green to Tony Horn. Boy, what, uh, what two big football players uh, make big plays today, Green and Horn. Here comes another record. Single season mark, most yards passing at 1,674 for Neilon Green. Here comes Sanders. Sanders to the corner. Tripped up by DeLon Parrish, but it's going to be a four or five yard gain here. Gain of four on the play will bring up second down and six. Well, Parrish has had a very good uh, game from his uh, strong safety position coming up. Unfortunately for him, he's had to make too many plays. That's right. The secondary, both D'Angelo Solomon and DeLon Parrish have had to make too many tackles this afternoon. Clemson moving the football. They're at the 26-yard line. This is the ninth play of a drive. It started at their own 28 following the safety. Clock showing 8.27 left. Elon Green hands off to Zanders, and Zanders pushes his way ahead to the 22-yard line. And now it's a game of keep away. Brian Ray comes in to make the tackle. Jim Caldwell knows that time is ticking down. His team has two road games left at Rutgers and then at Florida State. Rutgers might be a situation where you could look for a, a win, but Tallahassee's no place to look for a must-win situation to get your sixth of the year. But this program has greatly improved, the Wake Forest program. They're a lot stronger. They're a lot better athletes there, and they're doing, they're playing with a lot more heart. Wake trailing by 20, and there's a fumble on the exchange, but Elon Green pushes ahead, and he may have turned it into a first down. Brian Ray in on the tackle. When it's your day, it's your day. That's right. Elon's having one. When it's going right, it's all going right. Oh, it looks like Elon's got a little uh, strain or something of his ankle or leg. Certainly not a good sign. Mouthpiece comes out, and now he's in real pain. They'll take a measurement for the first down. That'll give uh, Tommy West some time to get somebody hot on the sidelines. Brandon Streeter will probably take to the football here in a moment. As Clemson is driving, Green may have picked up the first down, and he has. Green, of course, suffered a toe injury in the NC State game and was ineffective for a couple of weeks after that. And now Brandon Streeter coming in. Let's take a look and see if we can see what happened. He drops the football, picks it up. And Brian Ray comes in from the backside. He may have just caught it underneath his body a little bit and twisted. Hopefully it's not too serious. You saw there was a look on Tommy West's face just a moment ago that pretty much said it all because here is his quarterback having a hot day and now having to come to the sidelines. Tommy a little more relaxed as he talks to Rick Stock still. And Nelon comes over and says, I'll be ready to go back in. <laughs> Here's what Clemson has left. If they hold on, they'll win here and get win number five. Then they have Duke, North Carolina at home, and then they finish in the great rivalry with South Carolina. And the Gamecocks are playing well of late. Here's Xanders from the pitch from Brandon Streeter. And Xanders gets ahead of the 20 and it's thrown back at the 19-yard line. Brandon Streeter to Sam Zander, number six. 
Here's Nelon Green, holder of seven more records because of action today. Among them, touchdown passes in a career, touchdown, or rather completions in a season, single season yardage mark, and many, many more. Brandon Streeter on now, play fake, and rolls out to the right side, and he misses. A tight end this time. That's going to be James Chappell, wide receiver. Here's Streeter on the season, 6 out of 12, 72 yards and a pick. Streeter out of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, a sophomore. Well, this has been an effective play for him, the bootleg, and it came out, and uh, the big tight end had slipped out. But Streeter did a good job of thinking and coming out on the corner. 6.37 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Third down and eight coming. 13th play of the drive and a third down conversion awaits Brian, Brandon Streeter. Streeter looking for Horn, can't find him, gets tripped up, won't get the first down. Kelvin Shackelford, the sophomore from Farmville, Virginia, stops him. That'll bring the field goal unit on for one more try at the 19-yard line. Well, they were going to run the strip, a uh, little slip screen. Oh, here's, let's take a look and see what happened. There's William Wampler coming in the uh, umpire to break it up. That's uh, D'Angelo uh, Solomon and Tony Horn 35, mixing it up a little bit. 35-yard field goal attempt for David Richardson, who is three for three in field goals. This one is away, and it is good. <laughs> Fourth field goal of the afternoon for David Richardson, and it puts Clemson up by 23. 33-10. We'll return with more after these messages from your local ACC station. As Nelon Green exits the field, they may not need him again today as Clemson's build up a 33-10 lead. 5.49 left to go, nursing a lame right leg scoring drive for the Clemson Tigers prior to David Richardson's 35 yard field goal 12 plays 53 yards the keys in that drive two big pass completions from Nelon Green to Tony Horn totaling 41 yards but Green would not finish the drive Brandon Streeter took it in for the final couple of plays leading up to Richardson's field goal. Clemson 33 Wake Forest 10 and the Tigers look like they're continuing their mastery of the Demon Deacons. The kick goes out of bounds, and the ball will come out to the 35-yard line. So the short kick gives Wake Forest a little bit of field position, but let's get down to the sidelines of Mike Hogwood. Well, the news on Nelon Green has a lot of folks on the Clemson sideline worried. He really hurts in the joints where his toes are. They're going to go have it x-rayed right now. They're just hoping that there are no broken bones there. But Nelon's in a lot of pain as he walked off the field a moment ago. Well, we'll see them in a week at Duke on many of these same stations. As the Clemson Tigers continue pressing on for a bowl berth. First and 10, Wake Forest at their own 35-yard line. Ben Sankey has been in since the second quarter. Pass is complete to Desmond Clark. There are flags on the play. Ball comes out to the 48-yard line, but this one may be coming back. Well, it is. Uh, Kay Sneed came running up. And he was in motion when the ball was snapped. And there's a flag on the play. You can do that north of the border, but you cannot do that here. <laughs> Illegal motion on the offense. Five yards, still first down. And Wake Forest backed up at first and 15. So Sankey in command. Jim Caldwell has a lot of confidence in him. He also has to cite the Clemson defense this afternoon and has turned it up in the second half. Sankey steps up in the pocket, fires a pass complete to Clark, and Clark is brought down at the 38-yard line. It'll be a gain of eight. Harold Means and Chris Jones in on the tackle for the Clemson defense. Well, Sankey has displayed a lot of poise. He can step up and wait and wait and throw the football, and I'm sure that Coach Caldwell is pleased with his uh, play this afternoon. 
Quite effective. We've got a flag on the play. Clemson in ahead of the snap. And it's Terry Bryant, redshirt freshman from Savannah, Georgia, who stepped across into the neutral zone. So prior to the snap, offside on the defense, neutral zone violation. Still second down. So it changes second and seven to second and two and moves the football out to the 43 yard line of Wake Forest. Still some time left to create some fireworks, but Ben Sankey's got to get it done in a hurry. He has 23 points to make up. That's three touchdowns and a couple of two point conversions along the way. Sankey to throw, fires, and is complete. Desmond Clark in Clemson territory. At the 47 yard line, three, Dextra Clark. Polite. Dextra Polite, number 30. Makes the tackle. First down, begins. Well, again, uh, Sankey avoids the rush, gets the ball outside, and finds big Desmond oh. Clark, 6'3, 238 pounds. What a target. Without a huddle again, after the 10 yard gain on the 10th reception by Clark, it is Sankey to run, and Polite will run Sankey out of bounds Sankey, at the 38 yard three. line. And it'll be a gain on the play of about eight on the play. Well, Steve, he's really two. he's really been impressive this afternoon. I know that the offensive coaching staff is just delighted the way Ben Sankey has come into form uh, in his second half. Second down and two. Wake in need of a score in a hurry. Blitz is on and headed down is Ben Sankey. Chris Jones was all over along with Adrian Pringle and DeMont McKenzie. Loss of five makes it third and eight. Well, that was good pressure by Dominique McKenzie, 6'2", 265 pound sophomore. Third down and eight, Wake trailing 33-10. It's been all Clemson in the second half. Big rush is on. Sankey out of the pocket, has protection, but he goes down. McKenzie brings him down. The sophomore from Lake City, South Carolina on the sack, driving him back to midfield. Well, that's two big plays by McKenzie coming in and putting the pressure on Sankey. Sankey was waving his receivers to go on downfield. He breaks outside. He's waving for him to go downfield, and here comes McKenzie making a big play good sack four sacks on the day for Clemson 27 yards in lost yardage fourth down and 16 coming and wake down by 23 has no choice but to go for it here Sankey in trouble steps up goes left has some running room and picks up oh he might have stepped out short of the first down he did he stepped out a yard short Bill well, if he had just kept running, it would have been no doubt he'd have made the first down. He didn't realize where he was, I don't think. And they're going to mark it very close. It might be close enough for a measurement. Yes, it is. Well, They've got it marked inside the 37-yard line. He needs the 36 and a half for a first down. He got a very beneficial spot there. <laughs> Well, he did a good job of pulling it down. I just think he lost uh, location of where the chains were. Yeah. He just stepped out too soon. Caused a little more drama than I think Jim uh. Caldwell wanted. Now, let's see. Then an all-important measurement, because if he didn't get it, then Clemson takes over, and it's pretty much a moot point at the 317 mark. If he does get it, they have a chance to go up top and get a quick score. Here's the chain extension. Where does it fall? Yeah, he got it. Ah, that's, he knew exactly where he was. Oh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> ben Sankey said there was never a doubt. <laughs> the sophomore from Chicago. Well, he had me fooled. First and 10 by the skin of Bill Dooley's credit card. <laughs> which has been beat up quite a bit. No doubt. First and 10, here's Sankey stepping up. Forced to his left and tackled for a loss at the 39-yard line. And that is Lorenzo Bromel. Clemson doing a good job, Bill, of forcing Sankey out of the pocket and to the left. He's a right-hander. It's tough to throw long when you're going against your hand. Well, it 
It definitely is. We'll take a good look at it right here. There's a there's Lorenzo Brummel, number 91, and he has had two sacks prior to this ball game, and he put good pressure on right there. Fifth Clemson sack of the day. Sprinting out right is Sackey, and here comes number six. It's Harold Means. Sophomore from Spartanburg, South Carolina, flattened Sankey in the backfield. Well, Sankey slow to get up. Clemson, you've got to give them a lot of credit for being able to defeat the blocks of the Wake Forest offensive line and get back there on that quarterback. Ben Sankey started the day. There wasn't a mark on that helmet. It's all changed today. And roughly, I might add, here in the fourth. Two and a half to play. Pass on a quick slip screen to Tabidi Davis. And Davis picks up some yardage, but well short of the first down. DeMarco Fox on the tackle. It'll be a gain of the play of about 12, but they were third three city blocks from that one. Well, that was well executed. Tabidi Davis came back up under, caught the ball, and then made good yardage after the reception. Fourth and ten. Another All key fourth points. down conversion. Sankey made one the last play out. We're down to two minutes and change in counting. 33-10 Clemson. Wake Forest with the ball. Here's the pass. It is complete to Jamie Dees. Big reception, and he stretched out and got the first down. Well, he's really a clutch football player, Steve. Oh, Jamie Deese comes up with the big play when you have to have it. Let's take a look at it. As Stanky throwing out. And watch Jamie Deese go up, get the ball, number 21. And as Carswell. He's a strong safety in this ball game. A freshman had his first start last week against the University of Maryland. Jamie Deese gets the first down. Sankey is back. And Clemson is in the neutral zone again. They've been there all day. Well, that snap count again is that's the difference right there. Prior to the snap. Offside, defense, five yards, first down. It's the fifth time today that Clemson's been in the neutral zone. And that changes yep. first and ten to first and five and pushes Wake Forest to the 16 yard line. Well, that's just a change of snap count from one uh, one five, quarterback to another and has thrown him off. At the 16, Sankey steps up, has some room. Touchdown, Wake Forest. Ben Sankey. Wake Forest touchdown number 13, Ben First score of the second half for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. With a minute and 29 left to play, Ben Sankey from 16 yards out for the TD. That's a planned play, the old quarterback draw. And let's take a look at it. He goes back, he just pulls the ball down after a three step drop and walks into the end zone. And he dives into the end zone. Well, they kept that play, uh, that drive going very well with some fourth down conversions. Two fourth down conversions uh, allows uh, Wake Forest to stick it in the end zone. One by Sankey on a run, the other to Jamie Deese. And touchdown brings up the two point conversion. This is the longest push for Wake of the day. Deese to throw for the corner, and it is broken up, intended for Jamie Deese. And Carswell, the true freshman from Stone Mountain, Georgia, Robert Carswell breaks it up and prevents the two. Timeout on the field with a minute 29 remaining in the fourth quarter. It's Clemson 33, Wake Forest 16. Be with us next week. Jefferson Pilot Sports brings you the ACC game of the week. You'll see either Maryland at NC State from Raleigh or You'll follow us to Clemson where these Tigers will take on the Duke Blue Devils. Check your local listings for the game in your viewing area at high noon next Saturday as the ACC heads down the home stretch. Big games, of course, especially for the Clemson Tigers. Elsewhere in the fourth quarter at Knoxville, it's been a battle, but Tennessee's prevailing. And speaking of prevailing, Virginia is wailing over Maryland. Penn State, tough battle with Northwestern, but they lead at Evanston this afternoon. And Michigan, flushing its muscles with its fourth ranking over Minnesota. 
Iowa over Purdue. What a great season Purdue has had this season. And uh, Jack Corrigan's alma mater not failing, not faring too well, 37 to 6. Onside kick of potential. Matter of fact, it'll happen here. Trip Moore getting set to do the honors at the 35. And Clemson's got their hands team in the ball game with a minute 29 left to go. Well, this is something the coaches work on all the time, right? This is an opportunity now to see if they can uh, execute it. Clemson, I mean. This is Friday material. Ooh, nice fake ball loose. Who's got it? Who has got it? Boy, look at the way they set that up. They put Burdick in the game. They faked him, and now Wake Forest says they've got it. Well, it's Wake Forest football. Very good job. They started to come up like they were going to kick it one way, and then they kicked it the other way. And they caught Clemson off guard. Let's take a look at it. Ran right by it. <laughs> what an effective play. Burdick is the one that kicked the ball, number four. Oh, Now they say that uh, Clemson got it back. No, wait. We got a penalty. We got a penalty here. A procedure penalty, and it looks like Wake Forest was offside, so they'll have to kick it again. Oh, there goes that surprise. Yeah. Wasn't that Lyman, uh, Dustin Lyman, number 43, that recovered that ball? It appeared that way. It looked like it. Well, to not now. Wake Forest must do it again five yards deeper. So it's an offsides penalty against Wake. They could have had possession, but they won't. And they'll have to kick it away again. This time, Burdick will do the honors. Well, that was well executed. That's too bad. He caught Clemson completely off guard. One kicker came by and passed it up. Burdick came by and kicked it. <laughs> plus, plus, it alerts every team that Wake will play from here on out that that's in the playbook. <laughs> All right, one more time. This time, Burdick, it goes to That's 10 yards. Oh. Ooh, and it's caught and taken out of bounds by Tony Horn. Nice play by Tony Horn. And he's still yakking in front of the Tony Horn. <laughs> Wake Forest bench. Good naturedly, I might add. So Clemson Tony Horn Clemson recovers Clemson it. And the 46. Here's the turning point of this game. The Clemson Tigers up by two, but they knew that Raymond Priester wasn't going to be in the game, so Neilon Green took it upon himself, and he goes upfield. Tony Horn gets it through the middle of the field and trots 52 yards to the end zone. That gave Clemson an 18-10 lead, and they would not look back. Our turning point of this game in the second half on the first drive for Clemson in the second half. And this is Weatherspoon, and he could be off to the races. Myers tries to force him out, and he'll be brought down at the nine yard line he was out of the nine a great running play by Witherspoon well Witherspoon's got some speed Steve he turned that corner and turned on the afterburners look at him right here that's a good job that's Jeffrey Myers number 38 running him down 76 yard day for Terry Witherspoon out of Monroe North Carolina a sophomore and he's had to pick up the slack with Raymond Priester nursing a sore right ankle. First and goal, Clemson. At the controls, Brandon Streeter for the injured Nelon Green. Here's Witherspoon, and he's surging ahead to the eight-yard line, a gain of maybe one. A minute and ten remaining in this one. The Clemson Tigers are going to win their fifth game of the season. They'll go five and three with games remaining with Duke, North Carolina, and South Carolina down the stretch. That was big number 73, Kelvin Shackelford, that came in and made the stop on uh, Witherspoon on that play. Second down and goal from the eight, actually from the nine. Travis Mackin is in at fullback. Witherspoon now moves to tailback. He'll take the toss. And Witherspoon tripped up by Mark Makovic. Junior from Nesquahoming, Pennsylvania. And there's no game virtually at the nine yard line. And Tommy West just content to watch this one run out. And 18 seconds and counting. 
Clemson Tigers are going to conquer Wake Forest yet again. Clock runs out, but congratulations go out. And Tommy West, Clemson Tigers, pull a 33-16 win off over the Wake Forest Demon Deacons here at Grove Stadium in Winston-Salem. We'll be back right after this. Today's game was brought to you by Pepsi, Generation Next, by Nations Bank, by Advance Auto Parts, the best part is our people, and by Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. Clemson takes over in the second half on two knee long green touchdowns and wins 33 to 16. We'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. Over the Wake Forest Demon Deacons on many of these same stations next week, you'll see one of two games, either Maryland at NC State or Duke at Clemson at 12 noon. A fine crew bringing you our game this afternoon. For Bill Dooley and Mike Hogwood, I'm Steve Martin reminding you the final score is 33-16 Clemson. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of ACC football.